Welcome and good evening, fellow geeks, to our brand new VASIN campaign. Uh, happy to see so many of you here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, so I have not jammed something for a little bit in our channel, and we're jumping back in with a brand new series we're going to be playing on Mondays. This is VASIN. We're calling this campaign Answers from Ashes, and we have a killer cast. And I think that before we get into too many details about the campaign, I would like to introduce them so you know all the awesome people involved tonight. Uh, so let's just go ahead and go around, introduce yourself as a person. We'll get into character introductions a little bit later, tell people where you can be found on the internet, and uh, you know anything else you want to talk about. Uh, let's start with you, Bill. Hey, I'm Bill. Uh, I make Escape This Podcast and Solve This Murder. Recently, we did a new arc of Solve This Murder, a murder mystery show where we try and... Uh, have one host solve a murder mystery that the other creates and i created the murder mystery this time so the tables have flipped and it's great and that's finished you can listen to the whole thing there uh things you need to know about me i've just had covid so i am extremely lethargic and every second of high energy that you get on this stream i am paying for with a full hour of sleep later on so we're banking them now um and i'm excited i'm excited to play this fun game Woohoo! Me too. Me too. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Bill. Let's go with uh, M next. Uh, hi, I'm M. I exist here on Level 1 Geek and try to hop on as many other channels as I can. Whatever people let me play on, I love doing. So if you need this space on your games, hit me up in Discord. That's really... I also sometimes write for TTRPGs, so if you're looking for some extra content, also me, all, Discord. All fun stuff. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Em. Uh, Tori, how about you? Hey, I'm Tori. I live here at Level 1 Geek. You can follow me on Twitter if you want, or as long as I'm on Twitter, uh, <laughs> at Tori Fika. And yeah, I play, and sometimes I GM, and I'm excited to play this game. Awesome. Yeah, isn't isn't Twitter a fun place right now? But we don't have to talk about that tonight. <laughs> uh, Matt, let's go with you next. Hello, I'm Matt. You can find me everywhere as Improv and D&D. &D. Thank you very much. Fantastic. And uh, I just want to mention behind the scenes tonight that's going to be chatting with all of you, taking care of our uh, audience interactions. We have Katie from our Level 1 Geek team. So Katie! thanks to her for her yeah. production tonight. And uh, I am Chase. I'm playing the Game Master for this campaign, part of Level 1 Geek team. Uh, I've got some some facial tics, so if you guys see me winking at the camera, it's just me. It's not secrets most of the time. You can roll a sense motive or something on that. But uh, yeah, that's us. That's our wonderful cast that we have playing Vason. We're very excited about it. Uh, a little bit about Vason. Vason is a Nordic horror role-playing game by Free League Games. And... Uh, we are going to be playing a variety of their pre-written adventures. Uh, according to my own interpretation, uh, as, as I think most game masters do, I'm going to be changing things slightly uh, to fit our group, to fit my own style. And uh, it's going to be a great time. They have a whole bunch of just awesome, exciting pre-written mysteries, and I'm excited to dig into them. Uh, the one we're going to be playing tonight and starting with first is from their book, Seasons of Mystery, which is full of some fun adventures, and the book is also beautiful. All of their art is excellent. So uh, yeah, we're also gonna be using Foundry and Free League's Vason module. So big thanks to them for providing us with all those awesome tools to use for this game. And uh, it's gonna be a good time. So uh, that's the game we're playing. That's the group of players we have. Let's talk about all of you in chat. Uh, because we love you guys very much and we have listened to you guys. We are bringing chat interactions back for this campaign. Uh, me and Tori have been playing some Wildermyth and uh, first thing we always see in chat is why you guys have chat your points stocked up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. So we have brought some chat interactions for you guys to interact with tonight. Uh, so some of you have already been using them because uh, you guys see them already in our channel points. Uh, but let's talk about them just so you guys kind of know what they are. Uh, we have two dice pools here. That's what the Blessed and Cursed is on the stream. Uh, you guys can renew those with your channel points. Uh, blessed dice are going to add dice to a pool that any of our investigators here can pool from to add to any of their rolls. They just add a dice to their roll or two or three or however many they want to pool. Uh, it's team effort, so you know, 
if somebody says they want to use all eight, I don't think we can stop you, but your team can give you a, a dirty look and say, I wanted to use some of those dice. So just to, <laughs> just discuss how to use them. Uh, blessed dice are just strictly a boon and they will help them with rolls. Uh, if you guys are feeling a little bit more sinister, you guys can add some cursed dice to the pool, which are still kind of helpful uh, because they can use them in the same way as blessed dice. They can pull them on their rolls, but the catch on cursed dice is I reserve the right as the GM to put in a narrative difficulty of varying degrees as I see fit if they use cursed dice on the roll. So it's a bit of a devil's bargain type of deal. I have a they question. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. If uh, I use five cursed dice, is the curse going to be worse than if I had used one? Uh, you know what? No. I think that the what? it's you use any cursed dice, the roll is cursed, and I'm going to, I'm just going to, see okay. this fit. so the okay. more intense the roll the more risky it might be used to cur use a cursed dice the more trivial it might not be as big a deal but i'm already gaming the system she's already like okay so we just <laughs> take <laughs> multiple cursed dice at the Never. same time but you know <laughs> I, will say, I will say this if you're dumping like 10 cursed dice on a roll i might be tempted to make a little bit worse but okay that's general fair. rule of thumb probably not uh, i don't have any kind of like methodical system thought out for how many you use but we'll see uh, yeah so there's those also we have a couple of community challenges up that you guys can also see with our channel points everybody can contribute a max of 2,000 points to those tonight uh the goal has to be met in one night it'll reset if it's not met if it's not met those who contributed your points get refunded after the challenge is over but if it is met we have uh, every session i'm going to put up the option for you guys to either add an adversary or an ally which is going to be a new npc which will either come in during this session or the next uh, whichever suits the npc best and it will make their lives a little more easy a little more difficult or a little both so uh, feel free to chip into those and then the last thing we have is uh, if you guys are patreon subscribers shout it out uh or if you guys subscribe you guys can feel free to give a sponsor to one of our investigators and a sponsor is going to be cashed in on the next session uh during our preparation phase sponsorships will give the players things like extra experience extra downtime activities um more advantages during the preparation phase so uh yeah it'll be good for them and we'll make sure to do a little nice role-playing call out to whoever donated such sponsorships so that's what we have for you guys hopefully you enjoy it players hopefully you enjoy it looking forward to seeing some of these cursed dice rolls and whatnot and uh i think that's all that i have so why don't we go ahead and why don't we jump in to our basin campaign so let's talk about a little bit of backstory about where your characters come from before we get into some in-depth introductions now all of your players have something in common you are all something called a thursday's child which is more of a given nickname than something official but thursday's children are just ordinary people that have kind of an extraordinary ability for seeing and interacting with the supernatural. Supernatural creatures, creatures that are of myth and legend are called Vaisin. Vaisin are creatures that are usually quite dangerous in some way, though they're not always necessarily evil, murderous creatures, but they do have a knack for causing problems in one way or another. Now, most people don't see Vaisin generally. Vaisin are very good at hiding in plain sight. They're very good at using people's superstitions and disbeliefs to stay hidden. And although normal people can see Vaisin when the time is right, uh, Thursday's children, like yourselves, are particularly good at spotting Vaisin. When one person might just see a standard mountain that seems to have come out of nowhere, uh, somebody with the sight, as it is called, may see that that mountain is actually a very large troll crumpled up and taking a nap. So uh, you guys have kind of a gift for that. And all of you guys have, over the course of your life, become aware of that fact. You have had interactions with Vason. You are aware you have a gift to interact with the supernatural. And that is something you all know about yourselves. Now, all of you guys, through one way or another, have started having strange dreams. This happened a while ago. This is in the past for you know part of your backstory. You guys all had started having strange dreams about an old woman in a place called Uppsala. And 
this woman would tell you strange things about the basin. She would tell you stories about a society called the Order of Artemis that used to exist that would hunt these basin and protect people from the basin. And one day these dreams got very, very vivid and she asked you to come meet her in Uppsala. Uh, you dreamed about a map to find your way there and all of you guys found your way to meet this woman named Linnea Elfenklint. Now, as you arrived, all of you arrived together, and this became more of a congregation to meet her than just one of you meeting her personally. This is when all of you met each other as well for the first time. You all came from likely different areas, but all of you shared this same dream, and you all met Linnea. Now, when you met Linnea, she gave all of you an offer. She told you that she used to be part of, of this society that she had spoke about in her dreams, uh, which used to be called the Order of Artemis, but then as history went on, was just called the Society. And then for reasons that she didn't want to talk about, the Society disbanded and kind of disappeared. She's no longer even part of the Society. But she wanted all of you to pick this up. She wanted you to start the Society again and she wanted you to be the new owners of the society. So with this, with a very tempting offer that came along with this, she gave all of you a key and a deed to a castle in Uppsala. And uh, this was a pretty large castle, would have been worth a fortune. Uh, it's pretty run down and it needs a lot of renovations, but even still, it is a castle that is in your name. Uh, so for whatever reason, whether it's for wealth, adventure, excitement, or maybe a feeling of destiny, all of you felt like you wanted to follow along with this and start this society. So all of you have uh, been to this castle. You have checked it out. Your castle, which is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher the name of this. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, but I believe the castle is called Castle Gellencrew. And uh, as you investigated this castle, as I said before, it's mostly run down. It's in need of a lot of renovations. Some sections of the castle are in ruin. Some are dusty and old and unused. But there are several living quarters and rooms that have been set up that are suitable for you to live in. There's also a very extensive library full of rare books on the supernatural that are just endless resources of research. And it comes with a groundskeeper and butler named Algot Frisk, who is there to kind of serve your uh, your whim and help you on your adventures and help keep track of the castle. So, uh, as you guys have spent some time here, uh, some time has probably passed since you guys have reformed the society. You've probably gone on some minor investigations for some basin, but you have not actually successfully banished any kind of significant basin yet. Something you know about basin is that no matter how big or small, they are all dangerous in their own way if they are crossed in the wrong way. And also, very few of them can be killed in ordinary means. You can't shoot them or stab them and expect them to just go away forever. Most of them have a very specific way that they have to be banished. And if you don't have the right knowledge on a basin, they can be incredibly dangerous and deadly. So, uh, as you guys have done some research and you've settled into the castle, uh, we're going to begin this adventure well, all of you guys are currently visiting your castle. Uh, I'll get frisk over the time has tidied up your rooms and your living quarters. Maybe you have a house somewhere else, but whenever you're doing research or on a job, you can always come back to your castle and um, have a nice place to stay. So why don't we go ahead and why don't we start with going around the table and having everybody explain. Let's, let's talk about your characters. Tell us what your character looks like. Give us a little bit about your character. Tell us what your archetype is. And uh, we'll start from there. Let's start with, uh, we'll go reverse order from player introductions. Let's go with you, Matt. All right. So um, I'm playing Robert Wong. Uh, his archetype is servant. Um, and I'd say that as far as his, um, his placement here goes, he's here because he is the servant of Mr. Johan Bostrom. Um, yes, right there. <laughs> and Robert Wong found himself um, in in uh, this line of work because, I mean, he he wanted to do something that wasn't um, nefarious, wasn't illegal anymore. 
And getting into that, he decided, okay, I'll, I'll start here. I'll try this. But um, he found himself not, not very good at it. Um, I mean, I would imagine that the very first cup of coffee that he made uh, Sir Bostrom was um, just uh, boiling water with grounds poured into it. Um, but uh, he has um, certain skills that prove useful for Sir Bostrom, which, um, I mean, I don't know if we should reveal that yet, but as far as um, his, his forte goes, he's quite good at um, physical things. Fantastic. Love it. Great introduction. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, Tori, why don't you tell us about your character? Sure. Um, so I am playing private detective Constance Doyle. Um, yes, her last name is a nod to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, because you gotta ref reference Sherlock if you're gonna play a detective. Um, anyway, she is uh, kind of a thrill seeker. She gets a lot of joy uh, and excitement just out of this lifestyle. Solving cases, sort of seeing things come together. She finds it very satisfying and thrilling, especially when it's dangerous. And uh, that's something she enjoys about the this Vason line of work, uh, because often that leads to a little bit of danger. Um, I don't know how much background you want. She um, she is. Yes. <laughs> I didn't ask you how much background you wanted, Bill. <laughs> I haven't given as much as you want to share. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I mean, that's kind of a uh, that's really all I think you need to know about her. Really, she's she's a private detective. She's been in this line of work. I think this has been her career for as long as she's sort of been working. Um, she has always had sort of a mind for logic and like puzzles and and just sort of thinking things through but doesn't really have like an academic bent she's much more she likes sort of that applied logic and um sort of enacting order upon the world in that way and she also has uh, a pretty good insight into people and you know emotions and and well to put it bluntly kind of manipulating people uh in ways, it, it sort of is all the same to her, you know, it's like, it's sort of the laws of nature, the laws of people and how they act. So yeah, that's, uh, that's Constance. Fantastic. Thank you, Tori. Uh, before we continue on with character introductions, I did remember one more uh, shout out I wanted to give. Uh, as we're showing off this character art here, this character art is from the app NPC for Hire, which is run by Knights of the Steel, and they have very kindly given us permission to use this as our character art on the stream, and uh, it's just fantastic. Uh, it's a free app to download on the App Store, so I'd recommend checking it out. NPC for Hire if you want to use some character art for your campaigns. Uh, okay, let's move on with character introductions. Let's go with you next, Em. Oh, I'm Em. Oh, you're muted. I have fun things to say about my character. <laughs> <laughs> I really should just let Bill do my character introduction because that's way better than what I could have done. <laughs> I am playing Katrina Nordenflicht. She is an officer who has lived her life by a series of rules that have kept her safe and as many people around her safe as she possibly can. Um, she has fallen out of work recently. She retired from the military and is now trying to live that civilian lifestyle. And the excitement that Hunting Basin has to offer gives her motivation to be adventurous, not grow too too stagnant. Uh, she is good friends with Johan Bostrom and is excited to play and witness her next adventure. That's all that needs to be said about her. Fantastic. Great introduction. All right. Uh, last but not least, let's go with you, Bill. Uh, yes. <clears throat> I had COVID, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm playing uh, Johan Bostrom, uh, and 
Johan Bostrom is an older man. He is an academic, uh, and he's been involved in basin hunting for a little bit longer than he's been aware of a society of basin hunters. Uh, Robert Wong has been part of my household for a long time, and we together had an unfortunate run-in with a, a basin. Uh, a bit of a betrayal, but we'll get into that, I'm sure, at some point in, in the future. Um, friends with with Katrina, who until this moment I thought was Katarina. I thought there was an extra A in there and I didn't notice. Uh, and have frequently hired out the services of Constance Doyle in the past. Uh, I've, I I just try and figure this stuff out. Johan is big. He's quite a, a, a physically intimidating uh, older man, but very much focused on, on academia and research. And uh, my father as well was in a similar field of study although not taken seriously because most of his works are cryptic and inane rambling uh, that I have compiled with me and will one day hope to fully decipher. And that's Johan. Fantastic. What an excellent crew of investigators here that we and have. And my first kiss <laughs> was with a, a, a young boy behind the lumber yards outside of... Uh, Oslo, different country, mm -hmm. uh, though as it was called back then, uh, what was Oslo called? Christian, Saint Christian. What was? Hey everyone, what was Oslo called until recently? For like five hundred years, Christianstad. Christian yeah, there you go. Am I right? It's got Christian in the name. I'm Somebody pretty Google sure it's. This. I think it's Christianstad. Oslo, Christian Oslo. But back there, there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Speaking of uh, a different area, uh, this map that we have Christiania. here. Christiania. Christiania. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, so right here where all of your tokens are kind of gathered around, this is Uppsala. And as you can see, the Mythic North, which is kind of what this entire area is called, is very large. And Uppsala is quite a small portion of it. So lots of places to investigate, lots of exciting things. Um, okay, so you guys have all become acquainted oh, with each other. Uh, currently, as we start this campaign, it is the fallen oops law. The leaves are starting to change colors. Uh, everything is a bit pretty in da and drab at the same time. Uh, it's very chilly during this time of year. The winds blow through. It's very cold. Uh, not quite winter time yet. Not much snow, but it is chilly. Uh, it's been months since you guys had your first interaction with Linnea. You've been able to settle into your castle, get your quarters set up. And uh, you've gotten acquainted with your butler, Algot Frisk. Uh, he is a very kind elderly man, and he's good at keeping things in order, although your opinions of him may vary. Uh, so we are going to begin this adventure as all of you are kind of gathered in the common area of your castle. And uh, you are approached by Algot Frisk. Uh, he is a shorter elderly man, uh, kind of long white hair on the sides, balding on the top, a little bit more slouched posture. He moves slowly but efficiently. And uh, he is holding a letter in gloved hands as he approaches you all. Uh, masters, mistresses, hope all is going well. I have a delivery of mail for you. Uh, yes, uh, Robert, could you get the mail for me? Yes, of course. Okay. Yes, of course, Master Robert. Uh, this is from your dear friend and my old dear friend, Linnea. Hmm. And he'll hand you a letter. Uh, it's it's an envelope. It is sealed. It There's nothing signed on the front of it. This was delivered from the asylum. I was told it was from her. Great. Um, can Robert examine it to make sure that there's not any suspicious powders or anything? Anthrax. Before? That's how they get you. <laughs> <laughs> they think, you think it's going to be supernatural and it's just anthrax. <laughs> right. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and kick off with the first roll of the session and give me an investigation? Okay. I am terrible at that. Now in Vason, we roll a whole bunch of D6s based off of our stats and any sixes is, is a success. Uh, 
Sometimes things will be more difficult and require more, though it is rare. In this case, though, uh, you did not get any successes. It now, you do is. have the option, if you would like, Robert, to push this roll, which is you can take a condition, which is basically your life force in this game, to re-roll oh. all of your dice. Okay, okay. But you don't uh, have to. I wouldn't bother, man. Yeah. You're just checking for anthrax on a letter uh, from our friend. It looks <laughs> fine. And now uh, take it over to Bostrom. No, 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 you read it out. Oh, all right. Excellent. All right, we have a handout for this. Now, uh, production, this is handout 3A. Uh, another thing for you, chat, if you guys join our Discord, or if you're already part of our Discord, uh, all of the handouts that we give out during this game, we're going to be posting in a Discord channel in our Discord. The channel is called, I, I believe, Vasin Discussion. Uh, and we'll be posting the handouts there if you guys want to kind of follow along and, and see what we're reading with. But uh, let me go ahead and share this with you players. I'm going to make you guys the owners of this so you can edit it. And you should be able to pull it up in your journal folder in Foundry whenever you want. And this has well, a new Foundry change. I can make you guys <laughs> owners when I Good share Good luck it. reading that out. There is also, if you click on the handout <laughs> no, uh, not box... Luck. You can read, read the it as written. transcripted, easier to read portion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it says, Dear friends, I have received an urgent message from our Danish comrades, and I fear that dark forces are at work. If there's any truth to the references to... I'm not sure what that says. Hmm. <laughs> The situation is extremely serious. Kindly visit me at the asylum as soon as possible and prepare to leave the country. Yours sincerely, Linnea. Um. Yes, she always did have handwriting too good for her own good. Yes. She um, has checked herself recently into the asylum, I've heard. Ah, uh, can you tell me what this word is? References to, I can't quite References make that out. to Sanderman. 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 I believe Sanderman. it's uh, an old acquaintance of hers. Great. Thank you. Yes, of course. Uh, Frisk will bow, and then he's going to leave you all to discuss. Did she say I... where we were going? Sorry, did I? To. To the asylum, which is okay. Got it. Is that here in Uppsala? You guys would all know that it is in Uppsala. In fact, I can pull up a map here and I can kind of show you guys where in relation it is. Uh, so you guys, your castle stands right here in Uppsala. Ooh, Ooh. this map. The Ooh. ping. And, uh, all the way down south, this is the asylum. Oh, it's in the same town. Okay, cool. Yep. But she said prepare to leave the country. Oh, so yes. we're going to get information we're, that'll send us Well, I'm us assuming we're going to the Denmark. Uh, the note mentioned the Danes. The Danes, yeah. The only way we will find out is if we speak with Linnea at this asylum. Right. Honestly, I don't know where we'll see the worst people, the asylum or Denmark. The Danes are good at only two things. Gambling and drinking. Well, I think and that sounds absolutely very, delightful. Very annoying. Oh, of course, you would think these things. Maybe there's Danish in you. I don't know. Well, mm. if we are going to leave the country, perhaps I should get... I'll get started on packing my things before we go for the asylum. Do we know who this Sanderman person is? Has anyone... Does anyone recognize the name? Do we recognize the name, Chase? None of you would recognize the name at this point. I haven't the slightest idea. Well, hopefully he is easier to you talk to than the next. I would let somebody roll a learning check if they wanted to. I will search my memory banks. If they wanted to know. Very good. So. Johan has a memory palace. That's canon now. I shall. It, it's, <laughs> it's a memory castle. It's memory castle <laughs> Gillenkreutz. Uh, uh, uh. I've, I've named it appropriately. How do I search this? Learning. Learning. Yep, that should be a stat on your character sheet. You can go ahead and give it a roll. It is. Oh, 
holes. That's so many <laughs> dice. <laughs> look at all these dice, and none of them are correct. None of them, so that's no success. I rolled so eight would... dice, and I didn't get a single success. <laughs> so May I like, try? You can push that. No, you okay. can't try. We don't know who he is. He is a mystery man. I'm going to roll my two dice to see if I, I know. It wouldn't be worth yeah, it. Give it a go. <laughs> What are the chances you will know? Ah, that would be so funny if I did know. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, none of you recall. Doesn't even ring a bell, doesn't sound familiar. All right, well, I do have quite a few things, so I'm going to get Frisk. Frisk, right? That's her butler's name? Fisk. Yep. Fisk. What? Fisk. Is it Fisk? Is, Fisk? Is, you said Frisk. I may have said Frisk. Let me, I, okay. I'm doubting my, it is... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm doubting myself. None of us now in we, canon, no, none Fritz. of us it's know our butler's it's, name. Okay. It's Flay. I'm going we're, to get Frisk it started. A Gormengast reference, and his name is Flay. Is there the a bell or there, something to that he we use to get in touch with him, or do I just yell? <laughs> no, you just clap. Your hands. Okay. Just clap. Yeah, yes, I will. madam, you, you called? Yes, well, it seems we are preparing to leave the country, and I would appreciate you getting started on packing my things, since we are headed out to the asylum, and, well, you know there are quite a few valuables I would like to take with me, if that's yes, all right. Of course. I will gather your coats for the asylum, and I will begin organizing your belongings for a long trip. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. He gives a bow. Yeah, he'll bring all of you your coats, and then you'll see him rummaging with things, things that you guys have probably given him permission to at this point. If you don't want him to mess with things, he, of course, would not. He's but... not rummaging with my things. Yeah, I've got doesn't... a man for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. All right, are you, guys, are you guys heading to the asylum, or would you guys like to jump into your preparation phase? You guys can start your preparation phase whenever you wish. Um... I think or you can we gather some more. Want to go to the asylum first, right? Yeah, we Should don't know what to that? prepare for. Yeah, Honestly. asylum. Excellent. I right. I will not go. I spend too much of my childhood in and out of asylums. I don't. The less time I can spend there, the better. So you, please go, and maybe Bill will just be some guard or something when you don't expect it. It's <laughs> all right, Johan. I'll take careful notes and deliver a full report. Yes, yes, you talk to the old woman. I'm sure she'll say something strange. Fantastic. All right, so uh, Johan is staying behind. The rest of you are attending the asylum. Go, go. Excellent. Yeah, you guys, so you guys head to the asylum. It's a pretty short walk, uh, or you could take, you know, cheap carriages on your way there. Some of you have enough capital where you could probably afford a carriage right carriage. down to the asylum. Take. I'll hire you a carriage, don't worry. Yeah. You shouldn't have to yeah. walk through Uppsala. <laughs> Johan gets you a very nice carriage, which is nice because it is cold out right now. As you approach the asylum, a howling autumn wind blows to the city and the cobblestones are covered with yellow leaves. The beggars huddle together in narrow alleys and all over the city there are students scurrying about with fluttering scarves and thick books tucked under their arms. The mental asylum seems even gloomier and more ominous than usual. The bare trees inside the black iron gates make the place look like a courtyard of the dead, as do the screams and anguished whimpers heard from, from the barred windows. Now, as you guys uh, arrive and enter this asylum, which is not the most pleasant place, uh, you are welcomed by a very large, uniformed, orderly man, uh, just this hulking six-foot-four man, big in every regard, bald head, very large red beard, uh, steps up and folds his arms. What's your business here? Um, yes, we are here to visit at, at the request of Linnea. I, I assume I know her last name, but I, Tori, do not remember it. I don't think it was on the handout. Or Linnea is the name I'll give. <laughs> Assuming that's enough. <laughs> here for Linnea? About damn time. She's been rambling more than usual about dark tidings and some main man named Sandeman. Come with me, I'll take you to her. And if you do not mind, watch the language. Yes, pardon me, madam. <laughs> he gets kind of smart. Are you wearing your uniform? I am. I always at least have my jacket on. Yeah, he seems to notice for the first time and he, he gets a lot more respectful after you call him out. 
Uh, so yeah, he would lead you inside the asylum. Uh, there are people with hands clasped on bars through doors, muttering just incoherent things that don't make sense, people staring at you ominously. And uh, he leads you to a door towards the very back and unlocks it. And inside, you can see Linnea sitting on a bench with her eyes closed. Now, Linnea is a very short elderly woman. She's got curled grayed hair, very sagging, old, wrinkled skin, uh, tanned with time. Uh, but notably how you've not seen her before is she is completely strapped, arms down to the side with a bunch of leather straps, uh, just sitting in a chair, eyes closed. Take as long as you need. Is this... Paul, if she gets violent. Are the restraints necessary? Absolutely. He unlocks the door and he walks away. Um, Chase, we don't know why she checked herself in, right? Nope. This okay. is a, this is new information. A sudden, a sudden for us. development. Yep. Okay. Can I hmm. look around? Uh, I just sort of want to before I approach her, I want to like examine the space and just sort of see if there's like if she has like injuries, if it's clear that she has like injuries from like struggling against restraints or like does she look you know like this has sort of been a a long-term thing for yeah, her uh you know you can tell she she looks well i mean the restraints look unfortunate but you don't see any obvious harm or anything to her well-being okay she's she's breathing she appears to be asleep oh dear linnea Hmm. Katrina's going to step forward and get down on one knee in front of the woman and gently place a hand on her leg. Your friends are here. Wake up. Okay, yeah, as you as you brush her leg and wake her up, uh, she slowly turns her head to up towards you and slowly opens her eyes. And she gives you almost kind of a sinister grin for a minute and then kind of <clears throat> clears her throat and shakes it off. Oh. Very good to see you all here. I'm so glad you came. You received the letter? Yes, and we came in as soon as we received it. Fantastic. Um, Mr. Orderly, can you get the orderly back here, please? Is that necessary? Yes, I would like to order some tea. Unless you would like to go fetch me some tea, dear. Well, I am certain that Robert is accustomed to such things, and Constance will kind of side eye uh, Robert. Robert will uh, look back at Constance and then look over to Katrina and say, "Should I go get him?" Yes, Katrina please, will please do. Katrina will stand and step over to Robert and lower her tone, hopefully out of Linnea's ear. Um, yes, and if you can ask around. See what's been going on from others' perspectives with her. Yes, very if well. If you could get the orderly, Robert, dear, I would prefer to have you here. As the more ears that are present, the more likely this job is to succeed. It's just a bit of tea. Nothing the orderly can't handle. Then we will defer to you, Linnea. Stay the orderly Robert. seems to have heard her shout and comes walking in. Does somebody shout? Is everything okay? Tea. Uh, For the room, if you don't mind. It's rather chilly today. Yes, of course. Normal, usual Linnea. And she'll nod. Thank you, dear. Oh, don't mind these straps if they're unsettling you. Dreams have been particularly dark lately, but nothing to be concerned about. <clears throat> now, as my letter mentioned, you're going to be traveling to the Danish peninsula of Jutland soon. I received a letter here, a, a telegram, rather. Um, <clears throat> it should be just under my cot there. I'm a bit tied up at the moment. Would you grab it for me? Folded parchment, can't miss it. Yes, of course. I'll fetch it. Okay. Uh, production, this is handout 3B. Uh, so I will go ahead and share this to all of you. Uh, so, uh, Katrina, you are the one who retrieves this. So here it is. 
From the Viborg Post Office to Uppsala Telegram Station, esteemed mistress, require immediate assistance. Stop. Clear demonic presence on Grimstead Ling. Stop. Attacks on the Moorland Society's work camp. Stop. Unnatural damages on equipment. Stop. The men frightened out of their wits. Stop. Anger and foolery from the locals. Stop. Afraid it is G. Standman's devil. Stop. Awaiting your arrival at the Grimstead Tavern. Stop. What does this mean? Sandman's devil. The orderly comes back in and sets down a little table in the middle of the room with several cups of tea for each of you. And uh, <clears throat> gives a little bow to you, Katrina, a respectful bow. Don't mind her, she rambles about a lot of nonsense. I wouldn't put too much thought into it. You may leave, dear. Thank you. I... And orderly, what is your name? Um, uh, why, why do you need my name, ma'am? Because your attitude could use some adjustment. Uh, name's Duncan, madam. Duncan what? I'd rather not say, madam, no offense. I would rather you do. Duncan Dunford. Duncan Dunford. Danford. Madam. Danford? Noted. You are excused. He, he looks real nervous and leaves the room. Constance will give him a little wink and just and just say, thanks for the tea. I'll talk to her. Don't worry. He gives a little shy smile and leaves the room. Oh, I, I forgot how much I like you, dear. Very good. Uh, the service here, despite the little quips and misunderstandings, the service here has gotten much better. I helped the chief here with a mystery, you know. After that, they've been treating me much better here. Well, uh, would one of you mind giving me a sip of that tea, please? And just keep them coming between conversations. Keep the palate wetted. Constance will start pouring for the room or whoever wants some. And don't just pour, please feed me some sips as again. Oh. I am quite tied up. She will pour the tea and then hand the cup to Robert. <laughs> Robert, would you mind? Yes, of course. And Robert will uh, lean down and maybe not with as much care as he would like, uh, like kind of feed it to her initially, just a little too much, but um, we'll, we'll do his best. Nice. Yeah, she'll sip it and uh, she'll kind of dab her face on her shoulder as she is tied up. <clears throat> now then. Now that the pleasantries are out of the way, why don't we discuss business? Now, this Preben Rasmussen, he's a respected engineer from Copenhagen, and he has quite secure connections with my old society. We've corresponded for years about matters of importance. Now, I believe that he is a Rasmussen, or a Rosenberg, sorry, not a Rasmussen, his last name is Rasmussen. I believe he's a Rosenberger. Rosenbergers are, well, they were a different branch off of our old order of Artemis very long time ago. They're a bit more militaristic, and if I'm mm -hmm. honest with you, they sometimes get in over their heads. They don't know how to keep the peace between human and Vason quite brash. So I think it is quite important that you follow up on this request of his. He is a man of modern technologies. And that moor that he lives in, it is full of dangerous vason. I would like all of you to go travel down there and get it settled in a more peaceful way before he upsets the damn things and ruins an entire colony or destroys an entire region. As I'm sure you all know, disrespect towards vason can be catastrophic. Of course. Do you... Do you know what he, they are referring to? The G. Sandeman's devil? Yes, well, Gabriel Sandeman, he is a priest and collector of folklore. I should say was. He is long past. But at the beginning of the century, he collected thousands of legends talking about many different 
Vasen and magic in the Danish peasant society. He is regarded as one of the greatest pioneers of Nordic folklore. But he was actually, I believe, a Rosenberger as well, gathering information about the hordes of Satan. It's a bit of a shame. He was very wise, but his information was misplaced. But either way, any information you can find of his is sure to have some valuable nuggets. Then we will research that. Very good. Johan will be very delighted to hear he has something new to research. Yes, I'm sure he will. Uh, Robert, dear, no need for manners anymore. Yes. Just dump the rest of that down my face, please. Very well. And Robert will go ham. Yeah, it just kind of Nestle falls down her face and she just gulps down the last of it. Oh, thank you. I feel the tired's coming on now. And she kind of, her posture starts to drop and she looks very exhausted. Now, you must go to Grimstedling. I'm certain that Preben Rasmussen is about to make a big mess of things and this is in your hands now. Hmm? Um, Linnea, just one more question before we leave, if you don't mind. Um, what is it you are dreaming about that has been so upsetting for you? She uh, kind of looks off, not at any of you, just off into the distance as if she's looking at nothing. The nightmares are too grim. The nightmares are far too grim. Whatever waits out there in the moor, it's certain to kill all of you. But it must be done. It must be done. Uh, if I was you, I would take a train to Gothenburg and then a steamboat to Fredrikshavn on the Jutland. Too grim. Well, on that note, Linnea, have a lovely afternoon. And I think the rest of us should probably get going. I think that I should just clean up the spill on her face. She turns away from you and just like faces a corner of the room. Um, Katrina, good evening. Let's let's go. Katrina, Hi, I'm the second orderly. If you could just get out of this here asylum now, please be on your way. <laughs> yeah, come with me. Is it time to over? Please, uh, out of I'll... here now. Oh, All right. <laughs> As the second orderly escorts you out, you see the first large one lock the door behind all of you. Then you hear just blood curdling screams coming back from the room you just left. Oh, there's oh. a roller coaster in there. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'll uh, nod to the first orderly and uh, say, would you take good care of her, please? She is our dear friend. Yes, of course, ma'am. We'll take good I'm care of her. I'm asking him. You should be asking me. I can do it. You seem more than capable of escorting us outside, and perhaps nothing more. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm a recurring character, you don't know. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so you guys leave the asylum, and uh, you guys return to your castle. And we are now beginning the preparation phase of our first mystery. So in Basin, we kind of do a fast-forwarded montage preparation type scene. And during this, we're going to roll for our resources to see how much money basically you guys have to use for this scenario. Uh, and let's actually, let's go ahead and just start with that. Everybody go ahead and give me a resource roll. For every success you get, you have a, a, a resource. And then for those of you who have capital, you start with that many resources as well. And for any items that you would like to purchase for your adventure, uh, the availability is the cost of the item. Additionally, you can save some of it to try to spend it later. Now, you capital, roll the resources us... dice, wow. right? Yep, the resource dice. Okay, I got one uh, yeah. success. One success. So you have one plus your capital. Do we have right. any capital to start with? Uh, if your your chart would say it, depending on your resource number, it states how much capital you have, and that's oh, how much capital you get each mystery. So, 
Well, uh, I'm resources level six out of eight. I'm very well off. Uh, I start with capital five, I believe. I believe you are correct. And so I'm also rolling six more dice to add to that capital? Yep. Well, I'll sit myself here at capital five. And uh, let's roll six dice, baby. Let's see here. Resource nice. six is indeed capital five. Two successes. Two successes. I believe that with my five resources, I have three capital and I rolled no additional successes. So I'm just going to sit at three. Excellent. All right. So uh, yeah, now during the preparation phase, you guys can shop freely. So any items that you think you will need for this, you can purchase those. And then we're, we're going to go through and we are going to have each of you do a downtime activity. These won't necessarily be simultaneous. So if you guys want to start with one thing to see if somebody else wants to follow up with it, that's fine. Um, now, you guys can do things up to your, whatever you feel like you want to do to my discretion. But some common things you can do during downtime is you can use your very well suited out library to do any kind of studying on particular topics. If you want to know about the area, if you want to see if there's anything you can find in your library about what you're going to do, if you want to see if there's any particular vase in that you might already want to look into, you can roll for that. Uh, you can spend your downtime activity to try to gather more resources and reroll your resource roll. You can spend your downtime trying to find the best way to travel um, or other things at your discretion. And you guys can team up on them. It's not just one person per thing. So uh, who wants to go first? Um, I do have some questions about uh, resource management right now. We're sure. buying items. We're, get, we're preparing. We're getting everything we need that we think we might need for the adventure. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm assuming sharing resources perfectly allowed. I've got seven. We can add that to the general pool if people want stuff. Um, I'm not going to spend awesome. it all myself. Is there any reason not to spend it all? Is there any cause for these resources later on? Or I believe that I thought that was separately dealt with, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so you can spend these resources during any part of the adventure. So if you want to save some and like, say you don't think you need a weapon, but then you get to your mystery and you decide you want a weapon, you could spend a resource to buy if there's a store nearby. Cool. So having a couple Sometimes, of hands might be helpful. Yeah, sometimes like if you want to buy a hotel, if you want to get, buy a doctor to treat you, those things cost resources. Um, also, if you're out of resources and you want to try to bargain for uh, something and say that you'll pay them later, you can roll a resource roll and based on however high your resources, you have a modifier to it. So if your resources are low, you're not going to look like you're going to pay somebody back. You're going to get yeah. a penalty. If you look wealthy, you'll get a bonus. Okay. So, I have yeah, a question. There, there is some benefit sometime. Yeah. You said buy a doctor to treat you. Um, can I hire somebody to come with us or am I no, so it'd be like saying a one-time use doctor? <laughs> no, it's like if you're in a town and you need medical care, the doctors okay. are gonna charge you money. Okay. They're not that's gonna fair. just treat Treatment. most of them. Yeah. There's most no free health care. I understand. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so keeping some can be helpful, but it's not necessary. And sometimes you gotta keep in mind as well, Upsala is gonna have anything that you would need. Sometimes if you're going out to the middle of nowhere, they might not. So, Do we you, know much about Jutland and its if you, resources? If you wanted to know about the area you're going to, that would have to be one of your downtime activities Got to it. study the area. Okay. Mm. It um, sounds like we're heading to somewhere fairly uh, countryside. Like Jutland, obviously, is, that's a whole peninsula. That's every, That's got Copenhagen. It's got everything. It's, it's massive. Um, but we're going to Grimstead Ling. And I think Ling is... I was just looking it up while we were talking. It means heather, and I think it can refer to like farmsteads and land holdings. Um, so I can show you guys on the map because you guys oh! will see a map of where you're going. So you guys are currently right here. You're going all the way down to here. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of nowhere. <clears throat> okay. So it's There's quite a, a long little travel. thing. Yeah, this is going to take a minute. Um, nah, we'll just run. If, uh, if we're just sort of table talking right now, I'm I'm assuming Johan, you're gonna want to research this yeah, devil I'll be thing. Research and I'll so, probably look into Sandman and. The, I and wonder and if it would stuff. be good for Johan to do that first, and that could maybe help inform like yeah. If, yeah, if we, we find out want to make any special. Been hit with yeah, a yeah, exactly, exactly. So maybe we start with Johan's downtime, and then we can kind of use that to inform, like what the rest of us need to do. 
Excellent. And I will also mention this. You guys are, your downtime activities are assumed to take a pretty reasonable amount of time. Uh, every session has something basically, it's, it's like a catastrophe clock. The longer time goes on, the more escalated the situation becomes. If you guys feel like you need more downtime, you can take more downtime, but at the cost of that clock is going to be a little more pressed once you arrive but at our, the mystery. Our basic downtime does not. Your basic the clock. downtime is not going to harm you. Nope. Uh, well, yeah, why don't we start with that? Um, can I head to the well-endowed library of Castle Gillenkreutz and read up about Sanderman and, and, and the research he's done into this strange devil? Yeah, absolutely. Why don't you go ahead? Let's see. Let's see if there's a role required for this, because sometimes there's not. Do, 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 do. All right, so now you're looking into Sandman. Yes. Yeah, okay. the research that he's done specifically. All right, so there is um, no need to make a roll for this. Uh, you can't find... You do find enough information to confirm what Linnea told you. Uh, Sandman was a folklorist, and with your library from the old society, he is somebody who they revered as obtaining a lot of valid information of Vason. Though uh, he was a Rosenberger from their perspective, so they think some of it was kind of twisted and misplaced. But you do find that. you do find a book here, a passage in an old tome that's titled Underground Vason and Their Worshippers in the North, which mentions Gabriel Sandeman and his tireless search for legends, magic, and occult traditions rooted in the Danish Peasant Society, and uh, production, this is handout 3D, and I can share this with all of you. Okay, players, you should all now be owners of that, so you can reference it later, and there you go. Why don't you give that a read for us, Bill? Although I'm... studies of the chthonic forces are always difficult to conduct and hazardous to life and limb, the history of Nordic science contains numerous examples that even rival international luminaries, such as the fearless brothers Wilhelm and Jacob Grimm, they're very much overrated, in Germany, and the grandmaster alchemist Isaac Newton. Now there is a mind. One important pioneer in our own corner of the world, as I do this voice, I get closer and closer to turning into Werner Herzog, uh, in our own corner, <laughs> the Danish Gabriel Sanderman who in the decades between the Bonaparte's wars and the advent of the railroad traveled among peasants and commoners to document their relationship to the subterrestrial. Sanderman was an imposing man, tall and strong in body and soul, who during his many travels through the Danish peasant society, in its final bloom, collected thousands of legends and eyewitness accounts of underground Vason and their relationship to mankind. Her, uh, perhaps most remarkable of all is his documentation of the wondrous yet fearsome vase and haunting the famous Danish moors. So clearly this is where we are going. We are going straight into the world that Sanderman studied. I wonder if his devil is one of these underground vase perhaps we'll end up underground as well. Hmm. Excellent. So that was quite a bit of research to dig that up. And you do also confirm that, uh, the area you're going to is where he was rumored to see this fearsome basin that he was hunting. Uh, now, further information into the basin he was hunting would be an additional learning check from somebody else to help you with the research, or if you wanted to push down time for longer, you could give another roll. So who's up next? I do roll five dice for learning, so I could try to look into... The devil, that's kind of the part I'm a little more worried about, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Go for um, it. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So you wanna you wanna look into what the devil is. Yes. Now, uh, with some research without rolling, you automatically gather some information that <laughs> the vase that he was hunting uh was known as let's see here, make sure I'm not butchering this name. Michael. Uh, the Devil of the Moor, and it's had accounts of people and from him himself to be a very elusive creature that's been said to have wings and glowing eyes 
but he's never been able to pin it down and figure out exactly what it was. Uh, now, he has done a bunch of research into potential basins that it could be, but that research is tricky to follow, so that's going to require a learning role. Okay, I'll give it a go. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see what our dice pools are looking like. Okay, we have two cursed dice and one blessed dice. Okay, I'll just go for the for the roll. We'll see what happens. Uh roll oh, darn no successes so if you would like you could choose to push this roll which means you will take a mental condition and you'll re-roll all your dice or you can just accept that his research was too hard to follow and you couldn't turn anything up mm. <laughs> hmm i think oh. This feels pretty important. Like what we need to, we need something to go off of, right? Or do we, do you guys think we should do more research there? Like when we kind of get there and start hearing accounts and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> All right. Tell you I'll, what, I'll, Tori. Yeah, what, what? Why don't I, with my capital, bring along a book collection? That way uh, we can do that. Oh. I've got one of my one of my base items as an academic that I Amazing. have is a collection of so books, so we can do more we, research as we go. We can okay. do research while we're there. Okay, then I'm gonna not push it. It feels too early to get a condition already. I feel like we've got a long way ahead of us, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just leave it there and just get frustrated and and uh, grumble to Johan Listen, about it's, this. It's not this your fault. You can't read ratings. the writing of a Danish uh, investigator. They go off on strange tangents. They don't understand how to get to the point. They live, they're too close to the Germans. Excellent. Love Once it. you cross the sea that way, it's all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, who wants to go next? Do you have any ideas what you want to do, Robert? I mean, I feel like Robert is very much at the beck and call of Sir Bostrom, so... If there's any particular task that, uh, Bill, not not to put all the pressure on you, but if there's anything in particular you would want Robert to do, he would do it. Well, what kind of options do we have, Chase, for downtime actions? Is there anything, is like, are we picking from a specific list? Uh, so, I mean, you can do anything that, you, if there's something you want to do, you can tell me, but common things you can do is you can study things like you're like you're doing here. You can uh, try to go out and hunt for bargains and basically get more resources. You can try to figure out your travel arrangements to make for more comfortable or quick travel. Yeah. That's um, what I was thinking could be something relevant to do, right? Because it's a long journey. Right. If we can figure out and, and speed that up. Maybe we get ahead of things, right? Maybe there's, we don't run the risk of, that of, catastrophe of, of already clock. moving the catastrophe clock forward because it's quite a long thing. If we can start getting passage booked properly great um what yeah, did, we yeah. can linnea had a suggestion but we can see if we can improve on that yeah and you can also like look into public records or newspapers about the area you're going to yeah yeah we can either of those to make learn sense. about the area but i reckon if we can get travel yeah looking good yeah robert could robert could work on that i think i remember uh, there was a train and then a steamboat mm. so that was linnea's suggestion yep okay uh, yeah, so you're going to look into travel? Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and roll me an investigation to look into the best travel routes? Great. Because what Lene suggested train to Fredericia and then boat to Viborg? Yeah, so she suggested, Viborg. yeah, train to Gothenburg and then a steamboat to, to Frederick Chauvin on Jutland. Okay, oh, so. Oh, Frederick Chauvin. Okay. That's, and then, but then there's still such such a long train. Maybe we maybe fast get the train to Fredericia, and then and then a and then a horse and carriage to straight north. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> maybe. Uh, so would you like to push that, Robert? You that is what? no successes. I do you want to be... use any of our dice in our dice pool that we That's have true. to use? That's true. We do have two blessed dice and we have two cursed dice. Ooh. The options. Okay. You know what? I I'll use a cursed dice. And, use both um, of them. Can I use? Okay, okay. So 
do I have to push to use the two, or do I roll the two and then? Uh, you know, in? I'll let you guys either add them to a roll straight up. I'll let you add them after the fact. So just roll two d six extra, or one d six if you just want to add one more. Okay, I'll I'll do the two. So or I you can, can or you can push yes. and add a curse dice. You know, whatever. Oh whatever you're yes. Okay, <laughs> so I can imagine doing this being very frustrating for Robin. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want to deal with people. He doesn't want to deal with these things. He likes, he just likes, you know, getting down and dirty. So he's going to get angry. And so I'm going to push this. And then with the with the other two, so that'll be five die six total. I like it. So you're using both cursed dice? Yes, and I fail again. Oh, no. <laughs> Super angry. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why you're getting so... So violent with me, I'm just saying, you can either take the train to Gothenburg, you got to change here, you got to move. Now you want the 1115 train, but that's not going to come until 1120. That's just how it works around here. Now you get those tickets, but you buy the tickets further on. You get tickets all the way to Copenhagen when you get off early. Now those tickets will only take you to the train station to Gothenburg, What's... but not the train station that you want. You want to get the next train station. That... <laughs> you know, clear, right? figuring, out, figuring out travel arrangements <laughs> is infuriating. It is stressful. Yeah, there yeah, is so much yeah. to look into. And these tickets um, are for yesterday, right? Good. Okay. <laughs> I should also clarify, uh, I'm only going to have the adverse effect if you guys succeed. So basically, oh. if you succeed, oh. if you succeed with Cursed Dice, it's going to become like a partial success. Instead oh, using Cursed Dice, are you? Well, this train goes straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so against your best efforts uh you can't seem to find anything better than what Linnea uh suggested and i will say as you're looking into things her weight does look efficient but man does it look uncomfortable it looks like it's going to be a bumpy packed full ride to your destination okay okay um Sir, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to find anything beyond what Linnea had mentioned. You couldn't improve upon the ramblings of a madwoman? We're, we're just taking her trap. Okay, look, if Absolutely you've looked into not. it, that's fine, I suppose. Yes, my apologies. Yes, well, <laughs> you can make it up to me later. <laughs> All right, and that just leaves Katrina. What are you doing for your downtime activity? Katrina's going to go buy things she think might be useful for this because going into battle unarmed is, is you might as well just admit defeat. So uh, she's going to bring along medical equipment. Fantastic. Um, she's going to bring along. How much does that cost? It says, it doesn't, I don't know. It says bonus two availability three. So the availability is the cost. I thought that's so, when you could buy that many. Okay. I only buy nope. medical equipment. Okay, um, availability is how many resources it costs. I would recommend to Johan, I, I could pick this up while I'm out if you wanted some uh, fine wine, which is good for both bribing people and inspiring people on the rare occasion that we need it. I don't drink. Oh, um, and okay. Constance is behind about... Johan, like nodding enthusiastically, like, get the wine. <laughs> I will say then, I have an empathy of two. Then perhaps uh, a hurricane lamp. Are we traveling into a hurricane? Well, it helps us use investigation and darkness and detect people who are sneaking about unaware. Uh, yes, look, if, if you think it's a good idea, I have trust. Perfect. Then we will take that. How many? How many was that? Two. Two. Okay. I got yeah. Apparently high powered items. So that took two of. Uh, Johan's um, yeah. hurricane lamp's only one, isn't it? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I've, Let me double I've check. Got hurricane lamp as bonus to availability one. Availability one, my bad. Yeah. Um, and what else you get? Medical equipment only costs two. Yeah. And yeah. Fine wine is two as well. In that case, Excellent. I will buy medical equipment, and I'm gonna leave one capital left over for myself. Okay. And then, do you want me to store the hurricane lamp on my character, or do you want Robert to carry that? Oh, what about um, the girl? You know, uh, she's always looking and searching and doing all that. Constance. Maybe you give it to her, she knows how to... Ro Robert is a fine man, but finding clues, I don't know if he's in his uh, area of expertise. <laughs> of course. I can take the hurricane lamp. 
perfection. Yeah, all right, sneaky. that's all I needed. Now for your play, for you players, there's an items tab in Foundry and you should be able to see, search under core game and equipment or weapons or armor and you can drag those onto your character sheet and should put them there for you. Nice. So you had three to spend and you spent yeah. that on the, on I the spent two. and the medical equipment. Yeah, yeah, okay. I spent well, all I still of got, them. I still got seven floating around. Perfect. Um, does anyone else have money to spend? I have I one. <clears throat> okay. Um. Yeah, should we look at some of this stuff together? What we need? Yeah. Johan's also, it doesn't it doesn't take your downtime activity to purchase. Just so you know. Oh. oh. Mm. Anybody that, can purchase. In that case, I'm gonna try and do research on the place we're going, Chase. Uh, Fantastic. I'm not very good at that. It's learning. It's actually not even a role. If you just want to look about it, um, well, yeah, go ahead and give me a learning. No. You'll turn up something automatically, but let's see if you can get a little more. Okay. I do. Wow, okay. On two oh, dice. Snap. So let's give you this first. Now, as you're looking about your area, you turn up a newspaper article about a place called the Moorland Society's Modernization of the Danish Moors. Uh, production, this is handout 3C. 3C. Go ahead and show this to you players, and M, you can read it out to us. Wonderful. <clears throat> Progress is coming to the darkest Jutland. I'm not going to use that voice the whole time. <laughs> please, no, please continue. <laughs> Using the very latest in technology and science, industrious engineers from the royal capital of Copenhagen have taken upon themselves to civilize the barren moors of the Jutland Peninsula. It is the Danish Society for Moorland Re Reclamation, which many of our readers will already be familiar with. It is launching this manful initiative. Oh, that is launching this manful initiative. The bog shall be drained, the heather weeded out, and the germanic trees with virial roots shall be planted to keep the soil firm and shelter crops from the wind-blown sand. Furthermore, they shall use the latest marvels of artificial fertilizer developed by the hard-working and ingenious research engineers at the Polytechnical University of Denmark. One of these fearless torchbearers of civilization is the renowned steam engineer Priben Rasmussen. Oh, that's the guy who sent this out. Okay. Whoa. Um, Rasmussen, who will be leading the Moorland Society's expedition to the vast moor of Grimstead Ling, a primitive and godforsaken part of Denmark, which humbly accepted the noble task of ensuring. Oh, I missed the line. Godfrey, which, according to Rasmussen, might as well be in darkest Africa. Quotations. I have humbly accepted the noble task of ensuring civilization and human progress, says Rasmussen to our reporter. He adds that his only worry is how the local population will react to his steam engine. One uh, hears of the Luddite lunatics in England. Oh, the Luddites. Don't get me started <laughs> on those Luddites. <laughs> oh, goodness. Fantastic. Now, in addition so to this news article, uh, mm -hmm. you get a little bit of information about where you're going. You know that there is a, a pretty actually popular tavern around there that travelers say is better than it looks uh, called the Grimstead Tavern. That is where you're probably going to be hitting first as you travel in, as that's where the carriage routes typically will drop travelers off okay. before they get to the actual moor. Uh, now, the Moreland Society has a very large camp set up in the area, you know, where they're using steam technology to try to clean out the moor and make it more fertile. That's uh, bound to be pissing off Vason. Something somewhere lives on this moor, and they're Mason just ruining hates. their home. And yeah. you also Are you a journalist that... now forever, <laughs> Katrina? <I guess. laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to get out of this mentality. <laughs> and then you also know that... Uh, the main settlement around the area is called Grimstead Hus. And it is a pretty small settlement. Um, and that's where people around the camp are living. That's the only civilized area around the Moreland Society's camp. Did you say? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. In that case, I just would like to point out that they might not have fine wine where we are headed, Johan. And although you don't drink, perhaps some contacts in the area will find it appealing and uh it could work to our advantage yeah yeah look if you want wine just add it to my bill <laughs> just keep in uh, included in the itemized list of your expenses and please place 
Constance like yeah, shimmies I'll, I'll... excitedly and goes off with Katrina to go shopping. What does that look like? What is a sh oh an excited? Ooh, <laughs> I did that. Okay. Yeah, Good. I like that. I'm also, off. I guess that's a notable thing is with your research, you would know shopping is going to be pretty limited out there. Mm, it's yeah, not yeah. a large populated area, so services and purchases will be sparse. Uh, wine Bill. costs two. Do you want one of mine and one of yours to pay for that? Is that happy? Sure, that's fine. I only yeah. have the one, but yeah, that works. Uh, Bill, does my character refer to you as John or Mr. Bostrom? Well, probably, uh, probably, if, probably my actual name of Johan. Um, oh, <laughs> that'd probably be the best. Kate. Um, <laughs> okay. No, we're we're old friends. You you would definitely call me okay. Johan. <clears throat> John, if there's anything you wish to purchase, I recommend doing it who's, beforehand. Who's John? We're just Damn discussed. it, John! I don't know who this is. <laughs> back to I, back. I'm sorry, I have to quit the campaign. This was it for me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Johan! Yes. You son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of there, a bitch. There is not a lot of shopping to be done, so if there's any finery that you need, you should bring it along with you. Uh, yes, look, if we're going into, I've, I've, this voice has changed if I've done it. If we're going into uh, the, the like the jungle, well, not jungle, it's Denmark, but if we're going into the wilds here, maybe we, do we need to take things that are appropriate for traversing the wilds? I could organize a horse or something, or, or we could, or, or do we need, I don't know, uh, what what could we take? We may be forced to walk. Yes. And I'm looking here at the equipment list to see if there's anything that was like, oh, hey, this would be good to have in a harsher, less urban environment. Um, I don't, like, you know, there's like field kitchens. I don't think we need that, though. But we can take a, literally a, a strong horse or a, or a hunting dog or a guard or things like that that might be better when we're out in the wilds that can, you know, pull us out of bogs. We're going to moorland, right? Like, uh, some of that yeah. might be helpful. As well as ropes and rope ladders and things right. like that. It's like a classic D&D &D adventure. you got to take mm -hmm. well, a rope. Can I, I just say, I've been mm -hmm. going on a lot of road trips this summer and never once did I bring rope. And I had a big like conflict in my heart about it. I was like, I would be bringing rope if I was being smart about this. But here I am not bringing a <laughs> coil of rope with me. I had a, I had a whole crisis. Continue. Well, yeah. Like I could I... very easily grab rope and a, and a big strong horse that can meet us there, which could well be useful in a lot of... Uh, yeah, I, I, all I was going to throw out is that I think things that probably aren't super rare would probably be available out there. Like, I don't think a strong horse, like, I, I think you're right. If we want that, we should hire it out here. But like, I feel like some of the stuff that they would normally use for survival out there, they would probably have like rope, you know, or like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to read this yeah. whole list, but like, there are people living out there. So presumably they have like the basic supplies. Well, if they're, if they're all fine. Well, you guys are raiding for supplies. Let's give a little raid hype. Ah. Yes. Yes. For the raid. Thanks for the raid. Thanks for the raid. Big loves. <laughs> All right. So you guys locking in those purchases? Yes. Well, yeah, look, um, I've got six left. Um, I'll organize so we have a horse when we get there. A big, big strong horse. You got big it. Horse. How much three. that's two, three. Okay. Three for a big strong horse. horse. Or big horse, Chase, not a baby horse. Oh yeah, big um, horse. Do we want to get the rope just in case? I feel like you want to get the rope, so get the rope. Yeah. I'll I get think the rope. We're going to have to buy it either way, right. so we might as yeah, well if bring we get it with there, us. We're buying it. We can assume that I'm paying now for rope that's there. Like, I'm just, yeah. just yeah. like, when we get there, having money set mm -hmm. aside to buy it. They're, like, the horse will be there as well, right? Like, I'm not mm -hmm. bringing a horse on a train. That I'm, would not, be I'm not buying right. a horse in Uppsala and sticking <laughs> on the back of the train. I'm and just then calling, on a boat. I'm just, like, telegramming ahead. Mm -hmm. This is okay. your well, Let's do it. So that leaves us with. strong horse, stop, and rope. Stop. <laughs> we will leave supply you with three? wine. Or so altogether, four. that's that's cost four. Um, so you have three left. So I got. Uh, uh, oh yeah, no, sorry. That that costs another four. I've got two left because I gave you one. Okay, um, so and then seven. I've spent I've five. Robert one. has one. Yeah. So we got three. That seems so good. We got three as a team. Do we want to spend it? Or do we want to save it? Let's save it. Do people have I weapons feel. if they need those? 
I have you, re a revolver. I have such weapons. Yeah. Great, then I'll trust you. Oh, you're armed, huh? <laughs> I I have a saber. I have a rifle. I had Dang. the option to get a pistol if necessary. It's wow. I've got a lot of weapons. Oh, just kidding. I don't have a revolver. I lied. But that's okay. I Wrapped. feel fine with Katrina and her armaments. <laughs> well, if if it would help, because like we might be in a place that could get dangerous. So if you think it's relevant, we've got three bucks left over. We could buy you a uh, a musket. Does Robert have a weapon? Yes. Okay. I have um I have a pistol and also pretty good with these guns. <laughs> do do does Ro do we want we could get Robert like a knuckle duster or something. Like something that he can use because oh, he's he like physique. Need knuckle dusters. Look at those knuckles. <laughs> okay. Right. I just uh, those Constance... knuckles have been dusting for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would be useful to give Constance a weapon because she only rolls okay. three dice in physique. Yeah, but who cares? Brain, so, Look, yeah, you and I, fine. Constance, we are we are use our mind to investigate. It is these other two who who must use their fists when when their brains yes, fall I, to the Yes, I side. understand, Johan. We are going to be late for our Train. All right, I've quick, told uh, you. Yes, then, but yes. Move along. Let's save yeah, our money late. just in case we need it for later. Late <laughs> is unacceptable. Let us leave. <laughs> right. Fantastic. Everybody, run! <laughs> All right. So you guys are heading off on your jury, uh, journey, your journey to the moor. Um, so the last step of the preparation phase is everybody along their journey. You guys now with the route that you were taking, the one that Linnea recommended. It's not a glorious route, but it is quite efficient, but it's quite uncomfortable. It starts first by a train, the Western Main Line to Gothenburg, and then a steamboat across the Skagrik to a, the fishing village of Skagen at the northernmost part of the Jutland. From there, the journey continues by train to Viborg in the middle of the peninsula, where you will take a postal stagecoach to the Grimstead Tavern. So this takes you guys exactly five days to arrive at your destination. Now, along your travels, you guys have a lot of downtime. And during this downtime, you guys can make a preparation for your upcoming job. Now, your preparation is how you get your advantage for your job. Uh, an advantage, every player can make one. You tell us what you're doing to prepare for this journey. And role-playing wise, it's gonna, or mechanically wise, it's gonna give you one advantage to a skill of your choice. And it's worth noting that skill can be uh, save against fear. Uh, so when you choose to use your advantage, if I ask you to roll that check, you can tell me how your preparation helped you and you roll two extra dice once during the session. So uh, yeah, what, what do you guys want to prepare? What skill do you want to boost and what are you doing to prepare it? Uh, well, I know what I'm doing to prepare, which is I'm pulling a supernatural. Okay. Um, and so Johan is pouring through the book that I'm always carrying with me, which is my father's research notes. Uh, and he obviously had some weird thing going on in his life and de dealt a lot with Vason. Uh, and so, but it also kind of completely warped his, his mind. So his notes are, are very hard to figure out, but I've been reading them for the past 40 years. So uh, I'm basically going through my father's notes about like, the the moors of Jutland about underground vase and I'm trying to piece together what strange cryptic things I can find that he has put together in this strange academic scrapbook to hopefully uh prep my already incredibly large learning skill even higher as like a wait a minute I've seen this this I saw this I'm just catching glimpses and it's it's a laborious process I'm doing the whole trip because he doesn't things aren't written in order he's I'm, I'm jumping from one page that's connected to another page that's stuck to a page and i just it's just trying to figure out anything i can that references this type of vase and, and this type of love area. it fantastic all right so go ahead and mark your advantage as learning Great. uh katrina what are you prepping as your advantage uh in order to heal mental things you inspire someone with an empathy inspiration check right correct now so, notably unless you have like a long time to spend doing that uh, you can only unbreak somebody with that on the fly but that can be crucial because being broken is yeah, bad yeah so oh good to know so i can't like help somebody feel better with like a, a jaunty talk you can but you need proper like comfort and a 
a good amount of time. Like it's not like a okay. you don't instantaneously heal it. The only instantaneous healing you can do for medical or mental treatment is mm-hmm. to unbreak somebody. Perfect. I would like to give myself a bonus to an inspiration check. And I do that, but I have this old novel that's gone with me through so many different battles and I thumb through it. And as I do, like I have the smells of the book that reminds me of sitting around campfires and all these comforting conversations I had around them. So that's, I'm going to do my inspiration check. Fantastic. Love it. So Mark, inspiration is your advantage. Constance, how are you preparing? Um, I think I will uh, add to my mm, mm, manipulation. I don't know if we're going to need that, but I'll do that. Um, and I will do that by flirting with uh, like people along our journey. Just sort of, you know, pre- like just practicing like people are coming and going i imagine as as we like go along the route you know people will get on the train and get off the train kind of thing so i'll just sort of like casually over the course of the trip pick like a couple of people to kind of you know strike up a little fun little thing with and see if i can well, how'd you do you didn't think i'll be on this train as well <laughs> excellent i avoid me... the second the, the second orderly like my muscles <laughs> Uh, uh, let me uh, let me ask you this as well, Constance. So during your train ride, uh, you know, you're on a train for a couple days. Uh-huh. Uh, you are approached by a gentleman on the train in the middle of the night. As you are spending nights in the cabin on the train, you know this man has been married. You've seen his wife on the train. And he seeks some companionship from you one night on the train. Would Constance take him up on that? Wait, wait, wait. Is this, I've, have I talked to him before? Have we like- I know, he's, he's a strange, you maybe just like- He is like approaching glances. me out of the blue, yep. in the middle complete, of the night. Com- complete oh, significant, stranger. Significant yeah. glances mm-hmm. only. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he's, and he's a complete stranger otherwise. I guess what exactly, like how is he, a, is he like approaching me like, Hey, like, you know, do you want to get a drink? Or is he like, hey, I've Chase, come to sleep with you immediately. Chase, because, can like... I try and seduce Tori? <laughs> By all means, please can do. I, hang on, wait, 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 really quick, really quick. I'm, I'm just, here's here's why I'm, I'm teasing this out. Because yeah. Constance is not a sex worker. Like, no, of course not. So not that there's anything not. wrong with that, but that is not her thing. So like it would the need to be. The approach is very important. Yes, yes mm. that's okay. all I'm saying. Okay. I give this NPC <laughs> to you, M. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Hey, baby. Hey, yo. Go. <laughs> is Bill speaking for M again? <laughs> <laughs> Was I muted? <laughs> hey, um, I couldn't help you noticing me. Noticing you from over there. My name is John. <laughs> can I can I say, um, Tori, uh, that Robert noticing this approach would probably be on his guard and be kind of hovering around you, waiting for you to give him the okay. Oh, Escort that's very this nice. Personally. This is nice. in the this is in the middle of the night. Uh, so you know what, or just late later. Like... There would be flirting throughout the day when his wife okay. is not around, and you'd okay. probably be approached at the night. Got it. Okay. Um. You know what? I think I liked you a little bit better before you tried the whole cheesy pickup line. So, why don't we just go ahead and move forward? And the less you talk, the better. He goes to say something and then just shuts his mouth and nods with like a, just like a little happy grin. All right. All right. I'll go off with this guy. Okay. <laughs> Punch that deal super easy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that so... I had screwed it up from the get go. John's a player, folks. <laughs> All right. So you would share an intimate night with this gentleman then. I just need to confirm before I oh, get to the man. next part. Now I feel like I'm... <laughs> I feel like you're setting me up for something horrible, Chase. What, uh, do I, yeah, I guess, I guess I committed. I guess I would maybe want to know where they were going. Like, 
if I knew that I, that he was going to be on the train with his wife for the next like four days together, like I wouldn't, I don't know that I would do that. But if it was like, oh, he's yeah, leaving you're like, tomorrow. You're, you're off the train the next morning. Okay. Yeah, yeah, your your okay. cabin. Cool. Sounds, sounds fine. Why don't you roll me an observation? Okay. Also, uh, Tori, make sure that you keep in mind, I have exploited your dark secret. Yes. Uh, which is going to give you experience after this mystery. So. Great. Observation. Roll. I got one success. Amazing. One success. Okay, so during this night, one notable thing that you can't help but notice is that uh, on the back of his shoulder, he has kind of a grim tattoo of a screaming skull with a, it's kind of looped in a circle with a scorpion tail stinging it in the forehead. <laughs> What? And that's just you a memorable a... thing that you remember about this gentleman. You, that it, was. Do I have an opportunity to ask him about that? Uh, if you would like, yeah. I think I would like to because that seems very odd. Uh, that does not seem to fit with. It's so like <laughs> at least next M's, morning. M's take on on him. <laughs> uh, he's very nice. I mean, the tattoo doesn't seem to fit the man. That's what uh, I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. so she would ask about it. It's like morning after he's getting dressed. Yeah. Asking, yeah. What um, is that interesting, fascinating piece of artwork there on your arm? What is that all about? It, kind of you to call it fascinating. Uh, just a young and dumb decision. That's all. Hmm. All right. I did Thank say you. the less you talk, the better. So if you don't want to elaborate, that's fine. Did I ever catch your name? She'll smile and uh, she'll say, it's a very interesting tattoo. I wish you luck on the rest of your journey. He smiles and nods. Thank you for the lovely evening. And he will depart. All right. Fantastic. That is your preparation and, and dark secret. Apologies. Uh, Robert, how are you yeah. preparing on this trip? Um, I'd say that Robert... Um, probably, I mean, constants, I, I don't, as far as like these activities are concerned, it might be a, a, a more frequent thing. And so I'd say Robert probably would be doing a little bit of patrolling just to make sure, just in case there's some like ambush or anything like that, or in case someone like is going to stumble in on them. But amidst that, thinking about these sorts of activities he just pulls out a little crumpled up um letter um it's kind of faded old parchment um it's it, it's beautiful handwriting though the paper itself is very crumpled and he just rereads it um this is of course an old love letter from uh someone from maybe a, a life before this and as he's reading this, he's fixated, just kind of looking at um, the, the beautiful way she used to um, describe things, uh, especially her feelings. And I'd like to imagine that this helps a little bit as far as his uh, observation abilities, his empathy abilities, um, so that he can better ascertain um, people's motives. Fantastic. I love it. Yeah, go ahead and make sure that you mark that as your advantage. Thank you very much. And it is all noted. Wonderful. All right, so you know, some day, a couple days on trains, day on a steamboat that's packed full of people, a very bumpy and cold and rainy carriage ride. Now, of course, you are covered, but the chill air is not completely protected by your carriage. Uh, you guys are rolling up five days later in the late afternoon to the Grimstead Tavern. But before we get to there, uh, it is a good time to take our break. So we are going to take a quick 10 minutes. We're going to grab some water. We are going to refresh ourselves, and then we will officially kick off this mystery since all of our preparations are done. So stick around everybody and we will be back in 10. 
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, pleasure to see all of you here tonight. So many new faces, so much hype train, so many subs, so many yes. using the chat interactions. Thank you all so much. Making it a blast tonight. Super happy to be back with the new series. Uh, so we are playing Vason, for those of you who missed it. We have covered our preparation phase, and we are now heading into northern Jutland, Denmark, into a moor where we are going to investigate some, some odd happenings. So uh, yeah, when we left off, you guys were just finishing your traveling. So you guys traveled by train, by steamboat, by train again, and then by a bumpy carriage ride. And though this ride was efficient, it was not comfortable. You were able to get your advantages set up, but because of the uncomfortable travel, I would like everybody to please mark me a condition of their choosing. It can be ah. physical, it can be mental. Choose how this ride has affected you and mark one off, please. I'm choosing exhausted. That sounds like what this ride was. <laughs> I'm choosing battered. That sounds like what this ride was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choosing angry. Too many people around here were in a state of disarray. That is unacceptable. So just uh, for some some map visuals of where you guys are at. So you guys have taken, you know, your barge over here, you or your your steamboat, you've taken train, and you're taking your carriage ride all the way down here. This is northern Jutland in Denmark, and this is the Grimstead Tavern right Ooh. here in the middle. So that's where you guys are going. And then we can we can enhance even further. <gasps> enhance. And this is kind of the surrounding area here. So we are beginning our adventure over here at the Grimstead Tavern. Nice. In fact, I'll go ahead and get your tokens down here so we can kind of keep track of where you guys are moving about as we go through this adventure. So this is, yeah. this is going to be the map for the mystery. So more or less, you guys can use this as a reference for where you want to go. Um, something I'll talk about during this campaign, we're not going to use like super specific combat maps. The way that Basin combat works is kind of interesting. You are in different zones and those are going to be kind of generalized. If you're right on top of the basin, you'll be in their zone. If you are a little bit away from them, you'll be one zone away. And we'll just kind of represent that on a more broad map like this most of the time. We're not going to use hexes or squares. So this is about as enhanced as our maps will get for this. But um, yeah, back to the adventure here. So uh, you guys are arriving in the late afternoon. Dusk has already started to fall, and icy gales are blowing in from the gloomy moor, vast, barren, and desolate, stretching out on the other side of the tavern. Now, the Grimstead Tavern consists of three connected half-timbered buildings in the traditional Danish rustic style. And uh, they have thatched roofs and spacious yards, and several large carriages and wagons are parked outside. Yours now joining along with these other carriages. A wooden sign beautifully painted with the royal monogram and a stylized post horn shows that the tavern also serves as a post station and a hub for the organized stagecoach, stagecoach service. Uh, this is also where the road ends. So as you guys are pulling up, you can see that there are paths off into the moor, but they do not look like suitable stagecoach paths. They look a little damp and not so good for heavy carriages to move through. So from here, you guys will likely be moving on foot or uh, Johan, you can see that your horse that you have ordered is here parked outside the tavern. What, what does your horse look like? What does your strong horse look like? It's a big, strong horse. Do I need to describe what it, I mean? It yeah, looks what like, color what is, color it? Looks like is it? Yeah, what color is it? It is a, uh, a patchy brown and lighter brown horse. It does not look like a thoroughbred beautiful horse. It looks like a horse who has a job. And that job is to be a big horse. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you guys pull up here after quite a bumpy ride. And uh, as you guys uh, exit the stagecoach, your carriage driver, who is a, a pretty big, strong, burly, middle-aged man, he's got a pretty well-trimmed, thick salt and pepper beard. He's got long hair pulled back into a ponytail and he's got a stagecoach hat. Uh, he starts unloading all of your luggage and starts taking it into the tavern. Now, uh, 
as you guys exit the um, stagecoach, you are approached by this gentleman. He uh, seemed to have been waiting outside the tavern, his hands properly behind his back, and he comes walking up excitedly as you exit the uh, as you exit the stagecoach. Uh, pardon me, are you the experts that Rasmussen is expecting, perchance? That yes, would be us. us. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Well, my name is Jens. You may call me by my full title or just by Jens. My full title being Jens Ludvigsen, the assistant to the chief engineer Rasmussen and the science secretary of the Moreland Society. It is a pleasure to meet you. What would that acronym be? Just to keep things simple, why don't you just call me Jens? As you wish. Jens. Did well. you say you work for the society, for the uh, the Moreland Society? Can you tell us more about them, about what they do? Well, yes, they are here to bring modern society to this barren moor. That's at least our current task. We are modernizing the world, taking things uh, that are dead and barren and making them beautiful and plentiful. I take it you're not from around here then, originally? No, not originally. Currently, we are just here on a job. Lovely. I have been for some time, though. Perhaps we can have this conversation inside, where it's a little less galish. Yes, please. The situation has actually become quite dire due to some new circumstances. I don't feel proficient to speak of them, and unfortunately, I don't believe it is safe to get you to the camp, as night will be falling soon and you don't want to be caught in the moor in the middle of the night. It is not safe. Now, the society will be paying for your lodgings and your meals here for tonight. I will be staying in the sleeping cot on the upper floor. Uh, we've gotten all of you your own rooms. I hope that will suffice for the night. I'm Excellent. Guess. Now, um, before we do part ways, uh, I just do ask, please plan on rising quite early tomorrow, as again, the situation has turned dire and we need to get you to the work camp as soon as possible. Yes, this is no problem. We will uh, we'll have to remind Constance. She's always sleeping in. But I will make sure to be waking time. you up quite early. You don't have to worry about that. We should be fine. First light? First light at the knock of your door, as I will be awakening you all. Of course. Very good. Very well. Please uh, allow me to show you your rooms. Your good coachman here appears to be already taking your luggage there. He knows what to do. Follow right. Me. Is, is there anyone else from the society staying here, or are they all at the camp? They are all at the camp. I have been instructed to await your arrival here. I have been here for the last few days awaiting. I see. Well, we did come as quickly as possible. You understand it is quite a long trip. Oh, I do understand, and I take no offense or bad feelings towards that. I know the trip is long, and we appreciate you coming to investigate. It is just... I, I awaited your arrival anxiously, not impatiently. Well, we're here now. Yes, and I'd love to get some rest if we are waking up as yes. early as you say. Please, the tavern has quite good meals and quite good drink, and I assure you it will be a comfortable night's stay. Follow me. And uh, he'll lead all of you into the tavern. But as he's doing so, anybody who would like to, anybody who you know would like to look around your surroundings, why don't you give me a vigilance test? That's oh. not what I'm good at, but I'll give it a whirl. Go. Ooh. I, I got, have two successes. I also got two successes. I got one! Twins. Wow, you guys are so vigilant. We're real sus right now. We're, we don't really... Oh, wow. <laughs> we're with the yes. You we guys are, went from like no successes to so many. Water. It's the, it's the wind. wind. It's quite bracing. It, yeah. it woke us all up. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So as the coachman is loading your luggage into the inn and you're following Jens into the tavern, all of you notice something quite ominous. And on a dying gnarled tree out front of this tavern, you all can't help but notice, but a, there's like a very large raggedy looking raven perched up on a tree that just appears like it's staring so intently at all of you. 
a little more intense than a typical raven would watch somebody. And as you're walking by, y'all can't help but notice that its eyes seem to glimmer with this flash of green. You're not sure if it was a flash of just the, the angle of the light that caught its eyes or something else, but it kind of sends a chill down your spines. Huh. Case. No. Do we shoot the raven? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, may I pull, I have a little like sewing kit in my inner pocket for where I like reattach buttons and stuff. And I of course have a couple extra buttons in there. Can I pull a shiny button out and leave it for the Raven? Because I know Ravens like shiny things. Yeah. You're going to like set it on the ground. Yeah. Like if there's like a fence post or something, uh, like a little bit higher up. So it's not on the dirt. I don't want to have to touch dirt, but yeah. Yeah. As you're going to set that button down, uh, your coachman just bumps into you and trips. And currently he's carrying Constance's <gasps> stack of things and he just falls and dumps them everywhere. I'm going to try and catch Constance's stuff. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and roll me an agility? Okay. That is also, unacceptable behavior. Keep in mind... Uh, you guys have two blessed dice and four cursed dice at your disposal whenever you so choose. I don't think I need to use one. I should have used one. I miss. I try. I stumble. I flail. This but I fun. do not successfully could catch I, these guys. Could I change my condition, Chase? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> flustered? <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I was exhausted. I would like to swap that for for angry. I think I'm very oh. nonplussed about this development. <laughs> I, it's been a long friggin' trip. And then right at the very literal very end, the coachman drops all of my stuff. And now everything's like dirty and disorganized and, you know, wrinkled and all that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And in that chaos, uh, it kind of just catches all of your attention just for a brief moment as Constance's things fly all over the ground. Uh, as soon as you guys turn back to that raven, you didn't hear any flapping, you didn't hear any noise, but the raven is just gone. This I am, is a bad omen. I'm so sorry, madam. I assure you I will get this cleaned up. If any of your things are dirtied, I will clean them. My deepest apologies. Or, it's um seems to be clumsiness. an excellent start to all of this. Um, Katrina, are you quite all right? Did you see something of the utmost importance that you stopped in front of everyone? I think that there is no use in pointing fingers at what made this happen. And I'm going to pointedly oh, oh, set no, down my thing. Just simply asking a question. That's all mm. I was doing, just asking a question. But do you know what? The answer doesn't matter because all of my things are there and we can just move on. Please, Let's just madams, move on. do not tiff on my account. This is completely my responsibility. I also believe you dropped a, a button. And yes. Hand you your button. Oh, I'm so glad that she retrieved her button. I don't know what we would have done if her button had been missing this whole time. All right, I'm going to get some food before I um, say more things that I am surely going to regret in the morning. Yes, please. Mm. It's of most importance that all of you are very rested tonight. Let the coachman take care of your belongings. I will get you set up with your board and your meals. She'll just brush past everyone and sort of like, not like actually shoulder bump Katrina, but just sort of like mildly. It would be bump. Like, like hitting a brick wall. It's like you what you do when like you're like you you argue with a sibling or something, mm -hmm. you know, and she just like will go past you. Mm. <laughs> Careful not Excellent. to bruise yourself, dear. So as you guys enter the tavern, you see a couple people in post uniforms exiting at the same time. And inside this tavern, it's very warm. It's a nice contrast to the chilled winds outside. Uh, the tavern is lit by fireplace and uh, lit overhanging candles. And it's, it's a very nice warm feel to it. Uh, there is uh, some music being played, just a gentleman in the corner playing a piano. He's got a cup for some tips. Uh, and then you also see some some a few notable figures. There's not many other people here besides you. There's the piano man. You can see that there is a, a tavern worker who is 
cleaning some cups and tending to the counter. This is what she looks like. Uh, your coachman is currently taking your things into your rooms, which all appear to be on the bottom floor of the tavern. And then you see a couple of folks in the corner who are just laughing wildly as if some hilarious joke has just been told. And it is this gentleman and this gentleman. As wow, well as... these are striking characters. Yeah. <laughs> as well as Jens, who is escorting you in. Uh, you see Jens go up and talk to the tavern worker, and he gestures to all of you, and she nods as if she acknowledges something. And you see her go start working on some food and preparing some plates. Uh, what are you all doing? I don't think... Uh, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> We've got that. We have an early morning, everybody. I would say go to bed. It's been a long trip. We're very angry. Constance's things have had their first taste of the moors. They're about as clean as they'll be until we return to Uppsala. So mm. I am happy to sleep <sighs> and to have an uneventful night where nothing bad will happen and leave in the morning. Seems rather pointed. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Jens will approach all of you. All right, I have your meals coming. Yes, yes. Bring it. You take deliver it to my room. It's it will be fine. Very well, sir. Uh, Miss Chromater is preparing her very famous rabbit stew, as well as some house beer that is crafted here. Delicious stuff. Uh, not not too strong. One cup of it should do you fine. Just water and stew is fine. You've got it, sir. Uh, I will be staying upstairs there if you need me. I am the first door on the left. Please feel free to contact me if you need anything else. Uh, anything else I can do for you before I retire for the evening as well. I think not. Thank you. And again, it is an honor to have you all here assisting us. I will see you bright and early. And uh, he departs to his room upstairs. Johan, you can see that your carriage driver has assembled all your things in your room. Wonderful. There are very few things. Very few things. You got it. It's They're all books. in there. And and like a single change of clothes. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, there is a bookshelf in there that they have all been set down on. There is a desk uh, with a nice. lamp. There's comfortable beds and there's a trunk for your clothes and the rooms are simple, but they're comfortable. Books are immediately off the bookshelf and all piled on the desk. <laughs> I have a system. <laughs> uh, 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 I don't, they don't get shelled because they're all. I'm using them all. Fantastic. Are you Are you doing some reading this night? Yeah. Look, as I go to sleep, I'm sure, like before. Like I can't. I don't. Johan sleeps like you know, maybe three or four hours a night, and so he'll be up a bit too late. Just, I mean, ideally reading as much as I can. If I if there's time for me to take a learning check to figure out a bit more about the the stuff like local issues. Absolutely, yeah. What, what particularly do you want to? What particularly do you want to study? What are you looking into? Um, I'll tell you what. Would I have access to any like local? Because we've been talked about things. If there've been attacks recently on the Moreland society, there've been things that. Do I have maybe access here to local news? I mean, where is a post station? Are there local newspapers and things like that that I could get some idea about the attacks that have happened around the tavern here and around what you've gathered? No, you've kind of already tapped as many resources as you have for that. So you would need to find another source of resources. Can I bother Jens actually? Can I, can I call Jens down? Like, yeah, for sure. Jens, Jens, actually, and just like, I want to I wanna quiz him on any of the attacks that happened while I have all my books open as reference. So if he says like a keyword, I'm like, no, I think that was in my notes here. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like a researcher does. He seems kind of nervous as you're questioning him. I don't think that this is within my expertise, and I'm not sure that I should. I'm be not the one looking to... for expertise, Jess. I have the expertise. I'm looking for facts. I'm looking for groundwork. Expertise puts them together. You tell me what's happened, though. Why don't you roll me a manipulation? Oh, no! I can't manipulate. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Probably calling him an idiot didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nah, no manipulation for me. Would you like to push it or use any blessed or cursed dice? Let's throw some some blessed. Uh, how many how many blessed dice do we have? I'm not going to risk a curse. Two, two. I'll throw. I'll, here, I'll throw out two more dice. Okay. Ah! Oh! 
no, don't worry. They about were it. not that blessed, if apparently. He's not going to give me anything. That is fine. Um, and in, if he if he were to give me that info, I can just do some research on like stuff around here. Yeah. Uh, specifically, actually, I would do some research on going back to those notes from uh, from Sanderman about like the the local vasin in this area. Like, if there's anything that he has had historically as attacks in this area, as types of vasin that people have found. I like it. Yeah, go ahead and roll me a, a learning check. And remember, if you would like, before the roll, at any learning check, you can choose to use your advantage. Yes, I'm not going to use my advantage on this one, but what I will just double check is my learning is... I've got five, six, seven, uh, and I've got... Uh, I got my books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so your books just, basically that's they, just used to find it. Yeah, yeah. give me a bonus of one. Can I use that bonus? Uh, yeah, you sure can. Cool. So I should be rolling. Uh, can I add a bonus die? Will that roll? Will this roll nine? Oh, Ooh, snap. There you go. Oh, I only got one success wow. on nine D6, but I did get the success. Okay, so, so uh, I'm glad this I is a, this is how this kind of works. Uh, now, you're looking at potential basin. You're looking into basin. Now, there is a lot of basin and lore to study through. Mm. So what's going to happen when you succeed at a check like this? I'm going to give you some information about a basin. You don't know it's the basin you're looking for. You don't even know it's a relevant basin. But it's going to fit kind of the topics you're looking into. And it's a potential yeah. option. Things that are in the countryside, in the moors, things that attack, yeah. you know, fledgling industrial activity out in moors. Yeah, so why don't you go ahead and roll me a d4? I shall. Dice, d4. It's a three. And it's All pink. right. So a three. Now, uh, production, I am going to give the players information about Vason 3. So you turn up uh, some local legends about Vason called Mylings. And let me go ahead and give you handout with some information about mylings. Now, players, I'm going to share this to you, and um, you can click on the, there's an info tab of this that you can look at that gives you the information that you turn up as well. And if you want, Bill, you can go ahead and you can read that out loud. Oh! oh that's a creep. So for people who aren't watching, maybe for some reason, um, and you're just listening along, uh, it's like a, this myling, M-Y-L-I-N-G, looks like a like a little girl, but her raggedy dress is 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 just creepily floating in the wind, as is her hair. Uh, and uh, let's get some info. <clears throat> a myling is the spirit of a child murdered by its mother, often because it were born out of wedlock or because there was no social safety net for those too poor to care for their child. In the 19th century, infanticide is punishable by death, and the myling often wants to see its mother punished. The spirit haunts the place where the body was hidden, screaming, wailing, and sobbing. It appears as a ghost of the same age as the child when it died. The creature can also take physical form in the shape of a giant black bird with a human head. Okay. I wonder if that could transition into any kind of connection with ravens and crows, not have mm. a giant black bird without a human head. Maybe there's a connection. A myling can be teasing and mischievous. Excellent. So just mechanic wise for you guys as well. So what you've done here is you've a, you've gathered a basin entry. Now with further research, which takes significant time, you wouldn't be able to tonight, but you can dig into more. If you want to specifically dig deeper into a basin, you can look for things such as rituals to potentially banish them, weaknesses or secrets about the basin. So this is not all encompassing. This is some general information that you picked up about Mylings from mm. Sandman's studies. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. All right. The myling well, like, is involved. This becomes like a cold case. We have to go and find women, hopefully a time period, someone who's killed a child. But I think if the society is being targeted, the chance it is a myling is uh, maybe lower than we would hope. Unless it is right. a society made up entirely of murderous mothers. <laughs> so while Johan is studying and getting settled in his room, what are the rest of you doing? I have an idea, but if Em or Matt, you guys want to hop in, go for it. 
Sure. Uh, I Katrina really wants to go talk with the um the people who are laughing in the corner. Oh, me too. I'll go with you. Perfect. Nice. Robert, are you Is joining? That- or are you going off on your own path? Um, I mean, Robert would have probably stuck around when Johan was speaking with Jens just to mm-hmm. make sure. Um, but after everything is like clear, he would ask Johan to, to leave and then he'd probably head down to That's my the room. pianist. <laughs> I, I don't want to leave. Okay. So you're going to go talk to the pianist and uh, mm-hmm. the other two are going to go talk to these two in well, the corner. Well, maybe we want to split our resources. Constance, if you want to talk to the laughing people, I'll talk with the, the lady bar lady. I don't remember her name. Lady Bar Lady is lady what her bar name lady. is. <laughs> okay. I okay, that works for me. Okay. Do the laughing bros first. All right. Constance, you head over to these two that are just laughing wildly, cracking up as if they just heard the funniest thing ever. They're slapping their mugs on the table. And as soon as you walk up to them, they go dead silent and just kind of glower at you. I'll approach with a warm smile and I'll say, it's been a long trip and it seems like you're having a good time. Perhaps you could share some of your good humor and cheer me up a bit. Sounds like whatever you were talking about was horribly funny and I could use a good laugh right now. They fold their arms and just kind of lean back in their chairs and just stare. What a shame. Who else am I going to share this with? And she'll kind of flash the fine wine that they that she has uh go ahead oh, well me... i suppose i'll have to go enjoy this by myself why don't you roll me a manipulate okay since Ooh. i'm using the fine wine do i get that bonus from it i know i'm not using it i'm not like they're not drinking, drinking it but i am like utilizing uh, it you know i'll give you a plus one dice it, it is a plus one bonus anyway shut so. up shut up <laughs> I'm just saying it's too manipulation. It's already yeah. in the it's in the equipment. Okay, bonus. Why does it say negative one bonus dice? Because you're angry. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay, so that'll just cancel it out. Hard to be charming when you're pissed off. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Ooh, I got one uh, success. Okay, congrats. Nice. All right, so you start to walk away, and one says, "Wait a minute." And they both pound their drinks and they set their mugs on the table. Come on, then. All right, but I expect a story in return. You want a story? She'll she'll sit down and slide up to the table and and start pouring drinks for them. (laughs) She wants a story. Yeah, I got a story for you. Why don't you come down and pour some of that? We can have a talk. All right, she'll join them. Yeah, can you pour them some wine? Yeah. Do you pour yourself some as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'll pour myself a smaller amount because Constance does actually want to like use this mostly for other people, but she'll join them. They give you kind of like devious smiles. Like they still don't look super friendly, but they'll sip at the wine a little bit and they take a taste and then they take a big gulp. And they taste how good it is. What's your deal? Tell a good story, go know where you're coming from. How about I tell you after you pay for the wine that I have just given you? With a story, of course. I well, use I'm pay trying as... to pay you proper. Where are you from? What you doing here? All right. I've already dealt with quite a lot of rough people along the way. I don't need you joining them. I'm trying to be friends here. My name is Constance Doyle. You may call me Constance. I'm from Uppsala. I've come a long way and I've never been here before. So I wouldn't mind a little inside information from, I presume you are locals. Yeah, you could say that. You with that Moreland society, you look kind of like a scientist. (laughs) I assure you I'm no scientist. I... Mm, let's just say I enjoy a little bit more excitement than what science and books and things have to offer. Well, So no, I'm not with the Moreland Society. All right then, Miss Constance, you said it was? That's right. And what are your names? 
If we are to be friends, I prefer to be on those terms, at least. You suppose that's fair. You can call me Inja, and that there, that's my brother. You can call him Hans. Hans, and what was the first guy's name? Enjar. Enjar, okay. Sorry, Ejnar. Ejnar, okay. All right, Miss Constance, here's a story. Once upon a time, a big shit group of scientists showed up in the mall, brought a big stupid shit machine to try to clean it up. Something bad happened to that group of scientists, and they left town real fast. And all the other dumb shit scientists and outsiders that followed them, they disappeared too. Because outsiders got a way of doing that. The end. Are they threat? Are they threatening me, or are they, they just like talking? It like we hate the society. They all suck. Like they seem to include you. me in outsiders. I guess they're leering at you in a pretty threatening way. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for the wine, Miss Constance. He's gonna grab the rest of the bottle, and they're gonna stand up and go walk out. Wow. Oh hell no. Um. Can't. Are, are you guys are both in the in the yeah. room still, right? Yeah. Okay. I would like to stand up with them and kind of step step in front, and uh, I'll say, "I'd like my bottle back. I'm afraid it just wasn't a very good story, and I didn't laugh once, so I didn't really get what I traded for. So, if you don't mind, I would uh, I would like my bottle back." Should have clarified the price better, sweetheart. He just kind of waves it in the air. We had a verbal contract. <laughs> I'd say with Constance saying mind in that tone, Robert mm -hmm. is already moving over there. Okay, um, yeah, you, you guys can both notice this. You can see her shouting at a couple of gentlemen who have the bottle of wine that you knew that she purchased and they're mm -hmm. leaving. They're trying to leave the town. I'm going to try one more thing before I feel like Robert and Katrina are going <laughs> to get Fuck involved. Fuck some shit up. <laughs> yeah. So, and Constance know what's, knows what's coming. So she's going to try one, one more thing and she'll, she'll kind of step around again as he like moves to leave. She'll like step back in front of him and she'll say, <clears throat> um, so what you said about outsiders, they have a tendency to, to disappear, is that right? Uh, just clarifying. Well- It's just a story, sweetheart, don't be scared. Yes, oh, I assure you I am not scared in the least. I simply thought it would be worthwhile to let you know that people who piss me off also have a way of mm, ending up a little worse for wear. And she'll like glance meaningfully at, at Robert and Katrina, who are probably like, you know, behind the like now, <laughs> knuckles, you know, whatever you guys are doing. So I would really, I, I'm exhausted. It's been a long trip for all of us. It sounds like you just want to have a pleasant rest of your evening, I suspect. So why don't we just skip all of that and you can hand me the bottle back and we can. Call this just a friendly misunderstanding. Hmm? I think that's going to be another manipulate. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and roll me that? Blessed okay. and cursed dice available if you yeah. want. Yeah. You know, this feels kind of like a cool cursed dice roll. So I'm going to take, I'm gonna take yeah. some cursed dice. But I can, I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll add, how many do we have? Four? I'll add two. That'll cancel take out my all angry. Of them all four yeah why not you are so threatening right. there all right all right, all right. Back i'm taking here. it i'm taking it i'm taking it i'm taking okay. three so i'm rolling thank god okay. you did. wow one yeah, success right? <laughs> one oh success i got it i all used right. all of the cursed dice chase they stop they look at you they they look a little surprised that you're so boldly standing up to them they look back to katrina they look over to robert who seemed to have noticed the confrontation i'm smiling still just like so sweetly uh they glower at you and he holds out the bottle for you to grab oh thank you so much i'm so pleased to see that we can be friends this is going to be excellent she'll take it back 
That's an awful expensive bottle of wine you just took back. Oh, I'm sure you could have been much more expensive for you. And she'll chuckle and walk off. Let's get out of Katrina. here, Hans. This place is boring now. Yeah, they're let's gonna, go. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're gonna they'll walk out and they'll leave. Bloody outsiders. <laughs> it's exactly what Hans sounds like. <laughs> She'll uh, she'll go back over to Katrina, um, and just I, that that's all I want to do for Constance. So we can back up and see what Robert and Katrina did that whole time. But yeah, I like it. And Katrina, you start getting your meal here. The meal's just about done, and you are you said you're talking to the tavern keeper, yeah? I absolutely did. All right, excellent. Yeah, she uh, she puts your meal out in front of you first. She's working alone tonight, it appears. And so she's plating things up one at a time. Uh, as a reminder, this is what she looks like. She's the largest picture on my screen right now. There you go. There's for everybody else. <laughs> hey, darling, what can I get for you? Just your meal? Uh, my meal and a little bit of company. If I can just sit and talk with you as you work. I love a good chat. Name's Crow Mutter Peterson. Nice to meet you. Did you say Crow Mutter? Crow Mutter, yep. That's me. Fascinating. <laughs> I, are there many crows in this area? <laughs> is that a pun on my name? Or are you talking about my name, Crow Mutter? I'm the only Crow Mutter I know. There's a handful of crows <laughs> around these parts. Uh, I... Uh... Apologize. It seems I have stumbled into a joke. <laughs> I think it's a funny one. <laughs> so what brings you here? With the Moreland Society, it seems, since you're being ushered in by their butler or whatever he was. They've asked for our assistance and the odd goings on in this area. Anything interesting I should know about before I go face a bunch of scientists who think they know more than the natives of the area? Odds going on from a bunch of scientists, huh? What kinds of odds going on are you looking into? Unfortunately, they haven't yet told me. I was hoping you could give me a jump on the matter. Well, um, let me think about it. Uh, you, you're wearing your jacket, right? I am wearing my jacket. First off, I just want to say thank you for your service. I'm a widow of an officer myself, and I, uh, you know what, your meal and future meals while your stays here, they're on me. Thank you. That's appreciated. Yes, indeed. Well, I mean, odd going on. I know they turned up a bunch of child bones from the moors the other day. Child That's what I heard bones. earlier. Child bones? That's awful. Where did they Sucked come from? Sucked them right up in one of their machines. Who knows how long they've been there. Oh, that is horrible. Yeah, it is quite awful. Where did these children come from? Unfortunately, I can't say that kind of thing's not too, uh, not too uncommon. You're saying there's many child bones spread across the moors? Uh, unfortunately, there's lots of uh, children murdered out in these parts. At least there used to be. It's getting better these days, but, you know, child born out of wedlock and the older times were. Sad stories used to happen. So, I mean, not completely unexpected, but I guess it's something you'd call an odd going on, having some poor child bones sucked up in an old machine. You know what? I would call that odd. Um, yeah. I must say, with your name, I happened to notice some crows outside earlier when I was arriving. Large, large creature. Large creature. Uh-huh. Well, are you the superstitious type? I say that there's things beyond anyone's- I'm sorry, what was your name? Understanding. My name is Katrina Nordenflecht, Officer Nordenflecht. Officer. Officer Nordenflecht, nice to meet you. Can I call you Katrina? If you wish. Well, what do you wish? Katrina would be a pleasant familiarity. Well then, Katrina. But you have not earned! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let me, let me ask you again. Superstitious type? I believe there's more than science can account for. Mm hmm. Well, that answer puts me on the fence because you see, there's quite a bit of superstitious folk out here, and there's actually kind of a correlation between big old birds and child bones. And I could tell you about that old ghost story if it interests I you. I would love to hear about this. 
Well, you see, we used to have something of a folklorist out here. I don't know if you've heard of him. I, I don't recall his name. It started with a G, I think. But anyways, uh, he used to talk about something called Mylings out here. They're uh, revenants of murdered children, supposedly, haunting the moor in bird form. Lots of old tales about those things. Supposed to be lonely lost souls who merely just want to cross over, be reunited with their mothers. How do you let them cross over? Oh, I wouldn't know. I don't think it's real, to be honest with you, but that's the legend that's around these parts. If I wanted to speak with someone who knew more about this legend, who would I talk to? These days, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That old fella who used to know about that, he's long dead now. I think he had a relative around here, but... Sorry, I don't recall who. A relative? I think so. Maybe a lover? I just don't know. Was this Sandman? Uh, that was his name, yeah. G something Sandman, yeah. Gabriel, I believe. Sounds right. Sandman, and he might have left behind a relative. Or a lover. Or a lover. Or something a like that. Don't quote me on it. Don't quote of me course, on it. Of course, of course. Uh, memory searching back quite a ways. I think he passed maybe, oh boy, some 30 years ago or something. I was just a young girl when he was around here. Wasn't even married yet. Well, you're still a young girl, so <laughs> you can't have been around <laughs> You're for... too sweet, darling. <laughs> well, if uh, this stew that I've been smelling is anything... If it tastes anything like it smells, it seems that I'm in for a good night. Thank uh, you for I, your excellent story. I don't know where you come from. It's pretty simple stuff, but it's nice and hearty. It's about as good as it gets out here. You come from some fancy town. I can't say it's going to hold up to your standards. Ma'am, I have spent more than my fair share of time in tents and camps. Yeah, I bet you have. It will serve me wonderful. And I don't know exactly what you mean by that... You mean you bet I have? Officer, I'm sure you've been uh, in some oh. pretty rough situations. Of course. Well, if you're ever looking for more ghost stories, if that's the kind of thing you're into, I mean, you know, I can tell you about local legends. You just there there are more local legends involving crows. Well, not really crows specifically. <laughs> It's not that surprising. No, no, we have the one local legend. That's all we have. <laughs> I, I can tell you, there's been a lot of talking. talk from this Moreland Society about devil worship, that kind of thing. I haven't ever heard of anything like that around here. Now, you know, the folks from the nearby settlement here, they're a bit odd, but uh, devil worship, I don't think so. So now, if you're some kind of priest or something, and if that's the kind of stuff you're digging into... I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But if you're looking into the dark forces kind of stuff, you know, maybe take a closer look at the old plague cemetery. I can give you some directions to there if you want to go snoop around. Ah, uh, yes. On Grimstead Ling. It's where you we used to bury it to my the map. Old... It's yeah, on the sure. map already. I Perfect. Can... Yeah, she'll pull out a little map. You've got one similar and she'll confirm where it's at. That's where they used to bury all the old plague victims, suicides, unbaptized children, unmarried mothers. Those were deemed unworthy to be buried elsewhere. It's a, a bit of an unsettling place. If I was going to go looking for some dark arts, that's probably the place I would look. You are a blessing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just full of wild tales over here. Now, if you want me to be honest, if you're in that kind of business, I'm sorry if it's against your religious beliefs or anything, but don't waste your time. The moors out there can be dangerous. You just stay on the paths and don't go get yourself drowned. I have no intention on drowning on this visit. Very good. Just be smart about it then. Now, I'll go bring your friends here their food. Been pleasant chatting with you. Agreed. She'll uh, depart with you to go take other people their food. Meanwhile, Robert, yes. you're chatting with the pianist who's playing a nice, lovely tune. Great. Um, is the pianist uh, playing it well? He, he's not like the most incredible musician you've ever heard, but it's he's trained and the music is good. Okay. 
a couple missteps here and there, but it's pleasant nonetheless. Okay, okay. Um, in that case, when he finishes the song, Robert will clap heartily and uh, say, do you, do you do requests? I suppose I do, though I don't know if I have the biggest repertoire, sir. Oh, I, I believe this is fairly well known. Um, Moonlight Sonata? <laughs> I do know that one. Um, Great. He'll gesture to his tip cup that he has on the piano. Okay. Whatever you can donate. I have my one, my single currency, which I will throw in right now. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, he gives you a nod, and he, he perks up quite a bit. You can see he gets a lot more focused. He cracks his knuckles, and uh, yeah, he starts playing the song. He plays it quite nicely. It seems like it's in his practice repertoire. Great. In that case, Robert, while that song is playing, he just mm -hmm. closes his eyes. He remembers. Um, he remembers dancing. He remembers um, late nights just running in the woods. He remembers uh, times just spent sitting by the creek. And he takes out that letter again. And at this point, I would like to use my memento to take out one of my mental conditions. Ooh, I like it. I just need one more and then I'm broken, baby. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. I like it. So... I mean, assuming he's playing it well and everything is going well here, um, I'm going to take away... Um, I had taken Hopeless um, mm -hmm. earlier, so I'll I'll remove that one as I use just memories, fond memories, good memories, and the hope that perhaps new memories of that sort might be had again someday. Um, and as like the the song wraps up robert will crumple that letter back up put it back in his pocket and just kind of put his hand on the shoulder of the pianist before walking away yeah he'll he'll finish the song and before you walk away he'll say uh, thank you sir um what what brings you to town I didn't catch oh. your name of uh, robert I've come here to investigate with um, my my lord, and um, well, his compatriots. Uh, the Moreland Society, sir. I believe so. Yes. Mm. Good. Lots of scientists out here lately. Uh, name's August. Nice to meet you. A pleasure, August. Um, can you tell me, uh, I noticed a, a crow or a raven outside. Are those common? A crow or a raven? Yes. I imagine so. I've seen them around here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they're plentiful, but sure. Great. So, there. have you lived here long? Whole life, sir. So, not... It wouldn't be peculiar to suddenly see a crow or a raven then. I wouldn't say so. Uh, are you right. worried about the ecosystem and whatnot with all those machines? No, not really. Mm. Uh, I can't say that's odd, sir. Okay. Machines. Mm, are... Big old steam engine at the scientist camp. Real noisy. Draining out the moor. Are they a problem? I don't think so. I think the intent is to fix them more, sir, make it more fertilized. I do know they turned up something kind of unsavory today, got sucked through, but I, I don't think that's a problem. Unsavory? Turned up some child bones, I heard. Huh. But, right. I mean, that's probably a problem long in the past, not the steam engine's fault, right? Right. Um... August, do you do you play here every night? Uh, three days a week, sir. Okay. Um, 
Will you be here tomorrow night? I won't, sir. I'm going back home tomorrow. Home? Yeah, Do I live it. at the settlement just nearby. Grimstead Hoos. All right. Um... It's not far from here. If you needed something, I don't know what I can be of help. I'm just a musician. I, I farm. No scientist. Hmm. No bird expert. I just know there's crows. I don't know anything about them. Right. Well, sometimes music is all the help you need. That's what I think too, sir. Kindred spirit, it seems. Yes. Thank you. Well, pleasure to meet you, August. Yeah, of course, sir. You as well. And thank you for the contribution. Well, yes. Keep me, keep me well fed. Of course. Um, have a good evening. You as well. And he'll go back to playing some generic music. Great. Robert will just go upstairs and I maybe just give like a, a casual wave if he happens to catch the eye of either uh, Miss Doyle or uh, Miss Nordenflecht. Um, but otherwise, go to bed. Excellent. And uh, Chromatter will hand you your food as she passes by. Uh, give you to take to your room or eat there. Constance, you get fed as well. And Johan, your food gets brought to your room. Yep, it doesn't get eaten. Maybe, maybe <laughs> tasted, but it just mostly sits. I forget. Okay. That. The food is quite Bunch. average, maybe a little a bit above average, but nothing, nothing spectacular. The beer, however, if any of you drink the beer, is quite good. Ooh. Is it good enough to remove a condition? Uh, it is not. <laughs> I like it, Em, though. I like the play. <laughs> I just wanted to gauge on how talented you know this place really is with their beer. You know what? With a with a comfortable drink, I would let it remove a mental condition. Yay! Oh, that's all she's got. Sick. Not angry anymore. Same. I'm going to get a couple <laughs> drinks and I'm feeling better. <laughs> and then anything else you guys are doing before you uh, head to bed? The only other... Uh, folk that you have not fully interacted with in this tavern is your carriage driver if you have anything else you would like to discuss with them. Other than that, there's nobody else that you haven't chatted with in the tavern. I don't have anything. I do like this this scene, though, of um, I got rid of angry, so I think that looks like Constance sharing a few drinks with Katrina and like mm -hmm. eventually being like, I'm sorry about the stuff I said, and it's not your fault, and thanks for backing me up with those idiots, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she tells great. you not to think about it again. I love it. Wonderful. All right, yeah, you guys get a nice uh, night's rest. Um, for those of you who are sleeping and feel like they I'll, I'll leave this to all of you because Billy you're saying your character is a light sleeper if you feel like your characters are well rested uh, you can remove a condition for a comfortable night's rest as these rooms are Ooh. the best conditions you've stayed in in the last week great <clears throat> I shall, and I then shall. bright and early in the morning there is a knock on each one of your doors it is time to go. If you would please get ready, I will be escorting you to the Moreland Society camp. And he'll say that at each one of your doors. You hear him say it at each one of your doors. <laughs> he's hurriedly walking. He seems like he's in a hurry. I open my door as soon as he knocks and I'm fully ready to go. Oh, thank you so much, madam. Uh, time is of the essence. I must bring you to Rasmussen so he can explain the dire turn of the situation. And then I will wait you downstairs. Everybody else getting ready in a hurry? Is anybody taking their sweet yeah. time? No. I yeah, I Constance is a professional. She might not seem like this is her favorite thing to do, but she knows she's on the job, so she'll get ready quick. Excellent. All right, yeah. So you guys get ready and he escorts you from the tavern. Now, uh Johan, are you riding on your horse along the bog here? Uh, no, the horse isn't for, for person riding. It's, it's got for, all that okay. stuff. Are you, are you leading it along with you then? The horse is with us. I'm not on it. Okay, great. Yeah, so uh, he will lead you over to the Moreland Society camp. Now, uh, as you guys are walking along this path, uh, it is nasty. You can see that there's a lot of 
vegetation here that is probably quite pretty in the summer in the springtime but right now in the fall everything is just kind of drab and dying and it's squishy and muddy and if you veer off the path even the slightest bit your leg just sinks like a good bit into the moor uh and the first time any of you do that jens will turn back and say oh please i i ask you please be careful wandering off the path even the slightest bit here can be quite dangerous we've had many a number of drownings in this area you fall in too deep and you're alone. Uh, also, that's another good point. Please don't travel alone out here. You need somebody, and preferably if you have some rope to keep with you, just in case any incidents mm. happen, it's very advisable. All right, Johan, that was a good idea about the rope. <laughs> I've done this before. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you tell me what what seems to happen when people are alone? Well, if somebody is alone and you fall into the moor, then it's quite difficult to get yourself out. You get so stuck in the mud, you drown. So it's just the mud that is the problem, nothing nothing more, for lack of a better term. Well, that pun doesn't work in Swedish. Okay, also, thank you. Canonically speaking. <laughs> if my... If the chief engineer is correct, devil worship could be worsening the conditions. So do you think the devil worship is, so, is actively worsening the conditions of the moor? I, I don't know. That's not my expertise. That's why I don't want to say too much. I would much rather have the chief engineer explain it to you. But yes, devil worship is dangerous. That much is obvious, of course. I've never heard of the devil working through mud, but I suppose anything can happen. That's what the chief engineer says, yes. Uh, as you guys near the camp, uh, once you get a, a, in the vicinity of it, you can hear burbling of water, and you can see that there's water being sucked up from pipes. You can hear a like the loud crank and hiss of a steam engine. It's very loud, and you can see steam just jetting up into the air a good ways away from the camp. And uh, then as you approach it, uh, the camp is consisted of about 10 very large tents of wooden canvas, as well as a pretty impressive wagon park with carts that are set up. Uh, you can see the tracks of the carts that have come this way, and it's pretty precarious. You imagine the only reason they even brought carts out here was because they needed to move equipment. Um, you don't see much traffic moved from them back and forth, though. Uh, and there's over a dozen men and women bustling around this camp as you approach. Could I ask they Jens a question while we're uh -huh. walking? Yeah, for sure. Um, Jens, I had the great pleasure of meeting the two gentlemen in the corner of the tavern last night. They didn't seem to be big fans of your society. I was wondering if you'd had any type of run-in with them or any altercations or any trouble, that sort. <sighs> I don't remember the exact faces, but I can tell you that anyone from Grimstead Hughes is an absolute barbarian and not oh. worth spending any time on. That place Noted. is uncultured, uncivilized, and honestly quite rude. Um, I was quite fond of the bartender, Crow. The bartender's not from Grimstead Hughes. She is um, from elsewhere, and she lives in that tavern. She brought it up. She is an absolute delight. That's all right. I, I appreciate the information. Um, Constance will kind of give everyone a look like, let's not let's not ask him more about this. Okay. Oh, and of course, anybody from Grimstead Hughes is likely to be a devil worshiper, but you'll be hearing more about that. So be wary of any of them. Yes. Oh. I am so thankful that you gave us this information. I will certainly take it into account and uh, include it in our notes. Yes. I don't know why I'm telling you. This is, of course, your expertise, so I will leave all of that to you and the chief engineer. Uh, here we are. Uh, now, I will get you set up with a meeting with Rasmussen. Uh, we do have a tent for each of you. I should say the tents are shared one tent for every two of you. So two tents for you to share and divide up however you choose. Uh, hopefully that will suffice. We have desks, we have basic supplies, we have cots that are quite comfortable. Everything to have at least a semi-comfortable stay here. 
Uh, the company will, of course, compensate you for your stay here. We will feed you meals and anything that you need. Please come to us and we will try to supply it. Wonderful. Understood. Obviously, Robert and I will share a tent. You two can have the other one. Uh, could we quickly, maybe, before we meet with uh, with Rasmus, and would you like to debrief quickly about last night's goings on? Yes, I think it would be valuable yeah. to share information together before we further the investigation. Yes. So I don't know what exactly is going on. Hopefully, when we talk to Rasmus, and we can get more details about the attacks that are happening. But the fact that we discovered they were they had possibly unearthed or disturbed the bones of children and we know that maybe in this area there are milings there could be a connection there although according to uh, uh who was this piano man uh august august yes what, yes uh, this, this young man uh he says perhaps they only turned up these bones yesterday mm. uh, if we're being called over for other attacks I'm not sure if the timeline of the bones and the, and the miling involvement matches. We'll have to find out. Well, it is possible that perhaps these are just the first bones they've noticed. Or the first bones they've told people about. I don't get the impression that this society is overly concerned with them. Um, well, being very careful with the uh, the landscape and the things they might find therein. Yes, they don't seem to respect the Moors. They want to remove them, which maybe is the correct response. I don't know. Yes. Do it... It's also it... possible. Uh, I, of yes. course, certainly recognize the involvement of the supernatural, but I would like to throw it out on the table that it's possible that the locals, who are not such fans of the society, might be trying to do something to scare them away. Yes. Or perhaps both. Yes, there could be. Uh, these tales have been uh, it, it, it being used by the people of, to scare the society. Yes, it's, and then someone acting them out. Yeah. Exactly. It is always possible, but you never know the sorts of things the supernatural spirits are capable of. I'd, I don't believe, I believe more in the anger of spirits than the bravery of small country town people like this they usually Certainly. just grumble and then let the bad things happen as you guys are discussing you can see jens is discussing with this gentleman in the center of the camp who just walked out of the largest tent set up at the camp oh. uh you can see him discussing in jens gestures towards you and this gentleman straightens up his suit and starts walking towards all of you and as he does you all feel just the coldest gust of wind blow by you. It just picks up all of the sudden, sends a shiver down your spine, and following that gust of wind through your entire discussion circle, uh, you can see this swirling fog just go flying past all of you. It kind of slithers like a serpent. It doesn't look like a typical fog, and it starts winding itself around the camp. It goes winding between people, People look kind of panicked and back up. And then it goes out on the edge of the camp and it starts swirling around the entire camp like a big spiral and just makes this large wall of fog. And then shortly after, you see little glows of green light start popping up from all around the fog, like little green eyes, kind of similar to the same color that you saw the flash of eyes on that bird. And <laughs> that begins to happen. We will go ahead and we'll call that a session for tonight. Ah! <laughs> Damn. And we will continue with part two of this mystery next week. Same Shoot time. Them. Shoot the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, so we'll wrap up there for tonight. Uh, now, we had quite a bit of sponsorships tonight. So, players, I'll discuss with you what perks you guys can take with those next session. We will make sure we give a shout out to those sponsors next session as well. Uh, for the dice, I'm going to say let's carry that pool over because this is the same mystery. So we'll start yeah. next session off with three blessed okay. dice and three cursed dice. I don't see a reason we shouldn't bring them over. 
Uh, thank you all so much for using the chat interactions and hanging out. We had a lot of new viewers tonight. It was great to see some new faces. Uh, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did because that was that was a blast. I love all the new characters we have here tonight. Uh, before we wrap up for the evening, why don't we give a shout out to our awesome cast one more time tonight? Uh, Bill, why don't you tell everybody where you can be found on the internet? Yes. Hello, I'm Bill. I'm a podcaster. You can check out Escape This Podcast, a show where we create audio escape rooms and solve those. Uh, you can check out Solve This Murder, the show where I, or well, now I, try and make my wife solve a murder mystery while she pretends to be a detective. Uh, it's great fun. Uh, also, as a fun other dumb thing I'm doing on the side, go and check out Tom Scott's new podcast, Lateral, because there's an episode with us to start that show uh, where we try, it's like, it's like QI. We just answer weird lateral thinking questions. Uh, and it's great fun so check that out that was a really fun guest thing to do uh, there's another episode with us I believe coming out maybe next week I'm not sure some point soon so check those out that's fun too fantastic great gaming with you again Bill it was a fun time uh, M and Tori kind of consecutively why don't you talk about yourselves Level 1 Geek do you guys have any announcements we want to talk about for Level 1 Geek tonight uh, I don't think we have any level one geek announcements. We're going to be playing again next Monday. We're going to play this uh, mini series for probably about three months before we rotate to another system. So let us know what you guys want to see. I have many ideas, but I'm always interested to see what you guys want. Uh, I'm M. I I have a Twitter account that I occasionally post to, uh, Anthrama Streams. But otherwise, I'm mostly here at Level One Geek, making content, sharpening new skills. Fantastic. Yeah. Same here. You can follow me on Twitter if you want at Tori Fika. The Terrifica. only announcement I have, yeah, Torifica. Uh, not oh, uh, this is a half announcement, but Chase and I are still going to finish our wander or not wander home, our wildermyth, our wildermyth uh, story. So we better because that's yeah, been so but fun. But those are all those are very <laughs> kind of ad hoc. So just uh, join our Discord if you want to if you want to follow along with that and we'll we'll just keep you guys posted with uh with when we'll be hopping in and out with that yeah you'll see him when you see him because we'll play him when we'll play him we just kind of wing it with that one but it's fun <laughs> great uh matt tell the good people where you can be found yeah i'm matt you can find me everywhere as improv and D. thank you so much for having me Yes, thank you. Uh, I am Chase. I am playing the game master for this campaign. Uh, also part of level one, uh, level one geek team with Tori and M. Uh, I guess one additional announcement I'll add on. We're going to try our very best to post this series up on YouTube. Uh, yes. I'm going to see if I can get the episodes up on the following Friday. I will do my best. We'll see. YouTube is a is a daunting thing to keep up on, but uh, keep an eye out on our YouTube. We'll see if we can get this one up by Friday and keep it going. Uh, and players, just something for you guys to keep in mind, uh, game mechanic wise, this is all one mystery. So we are continuing the same mystery next week, which mm -hmm. means keep your memento usage where it's at, keep your conditions where they're at, keep your advantages where they're at. This will all still be the same mystery. And then just keep a, keep in mind, if you guys look at the experience questionnaire, we're going to, at the end, it's all going to pertain to this mystery. So keep an eye on that. Remember if I've used your dark secret, remember things you've done. And uh, we'll keep it going next time. So uh, once again, we have played Vason tonight by Free League. Uh, the adventure that I was running tonight is from their book, Seasons of Mystery, which is both beautiful, full of good art and full of good mysteries. There are, I think, five of them in this, four or five of them in this book. This is one of them. So highly recommend it. It's a super fun game. Uh, thanks for joining chat. I think that's all that we have for tonight. So everybody, make sure you tune in next week. Go take a short rest. Keep yourselves hydrated, but don't hydrate by sinking yourself into a moor because it's dangerous. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs>